Good evening, everybody. Ooh, do I need to do I need to focus this up real quick? How's it going? It's your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. <laughs> Jordan needed her mic. <laughs> Took me a second. Let's see how it looks there. out. I feel like sometimes when I'm looking at my screen over there, it looks blurrier than it is. Oh, that, oh it definitely. is hella blurry. <laughs> Refocus. Please. My hair is a mess. That's why I opted for a hat because I didn't have time to wash my hair today because I was awoken at three at four thirty by a little goblin named Kazoo who did not stop until. 545 when he laid his head down <laughs> let me check out chat here how's everybody doing how are we all feeling in this new week right on the verge of february hello hello hope everything's going amazing for all of you hit that like button while you're here welcome to our members Shout out to the members. You can see them in the chat with their little icons next to their names and their color highlighted names, too. If you The are, patrons are all among us. Yeah, the patrons are here, too, I'm sure. Um, if you are new here, this is our Tuesday night stream where we cover various topics. And so if you are watching this after it has aired for the first time, there will be chapters on the little scrubby timeline thing so if you are just looking to watch one or two things in particular feel free to scrub to what you are looking for that will be available once i finish them after we are done streaming yes we sometimes slack on that but i've been better about it lately i haven't done the last one but yeah uh song of solace is lucky to be here all their car almost caught fire on the way home from school. That's, That's horrifying. So terrifying. Kazoo gives very much muffin energy, especially lately. Yeah. As far as car troubles go, I don't think I've ever had that serious of car trouble. Um, I did, however, get into two accidents in a week. The first being me rear-ending somebody, and the second being me getting rear-ended. And both within, like, five miles of my house. And I, my joke always has been, apparently, on average, you get into three car accidents in your life. And I was like, well, I only got one left, so the last one better be spectacular. Stop! <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, my God. How did you not know how the joke was going to end? I was going to... You've heard that thoughts before. Thoughts like that and my OCD do not mix well together. It's funny. All right. Objectively. Anyway. We've got a lot to talk about today. The Mormon universe slash Mormon adjacent universe is popping been off, blowing up over the last few days. Like, feel like I can't. Keep yeah, up. and the the Mormon multiverse is expanding again. It is expanding. It, looking at the title, you can see that we've added another Infinity Stone to the ever growing power of the Mormon Church. Yeah. So to speak, I guess. Um, okay, so where do we want to start? I think um, the hottest topic is the one that's going to take us the longest. Sure, yeah. Which is which is that one? <laughs> the one we were talking about before we started. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's do that one. Would you like to... Um, You'll have to send me some links on that one because I didn't have anything pulled up quite yet. That's fine. It's amazing. We got we got in like three minutes earlier than usual. Usually we let the time roll for like five minutes before we get on. No kidding. And today we were just about just about ready as soon as we went live. What is this doing here? Uh oh. Dead air, dead air. Ellie, welcome to the live. 
replay crew no longer <laughs> which we love also in uh home news tomorrow we're saying goodbye to diapers and i am not having a good time <laughs> Well, that's mainly because you woke up at 4.30 this morning. That's not just because I woke up at 4.30 this morning. Well, we're morning. also I'm dreading also this, but... I'm not, also not ready for this. And I'll simultaneously so sick and tired of diapers. So there's that. Um, yeah. I cannot describe to you... And... Of course, we always let Kazoo, we give Kazoo the choice. We're like, hey, yo, who who do you want to choose to change your poopy diaper? And of course, I mean, I'm the one who's there all the time. So he's like, oh, I want daddy to do it. Come on, bro. Give me a break. <laughs> We're doing the um, um, the three day method. I don't even know what to call it. It's the big little feelings. We took their course and everything. They do the the three day method where uh, you just no more diapers. So tomorrow is the day. No more diapers. Um, and then we take three days and we watch him very closely. The first day, just just going free. No no diapers. No pants. No undies. And then uh, we work our way up from there. So, yeah. Going to be interesting. Okay. Oh, Caroline did uh, Big Little Feelings, too. I'm oh, glad cool. to hear other other people do that. Um, I'm, you know, going to be a big fan when stuff like that is backed up, especially by, like, when you have one of them who's a therapist and a, based on research and has worked under some pretty phenomenal, like, child therapists. Um, anywho, so the topic that we're going to start with today is the one that has taken the ex-Mormon and really the Mormon world by storm, homophobia or transphobia or any of the like. So if you are in here to be a bigot and be obnoxious, you will just be blocked. Um, so just know that our mods do not have any tolerance, nor do we for stupid behavior like that. So do not be a jackass. Okay. That's, that's the method I will, I will give you. Um, I, I think it was a YouTube buffering situation. YouTube might have buffered for a second. My, my chat disconnected. So, so that's usually the telltale sign. We, it looks like we're okay. Um, it keeps cutting in and out. What is happening? Boo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is probably out of my hands because we've got excellent stream health right now. So this would be a YouTube thing. Sorry, y'all. Okay. It's been an issue on and off all day on YouTube streams, apparently, according to one of our mods. So okay. this is not an us yeah. issue, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to say usually it's not because it, I don't like to be the issue. But, I mean, really, it usually <laughs> isn't. It's usually YouTube. Which unfortunately, is, it's. Surprising. Yeah. So, today we're going to talk about this Mormon Stories podcast that came out yesterday. Um, DMs blew up. Lots of opinions. I have my own personal opinions. We're going to try to have a nuanced discussion here. Okay. <laughs> um, lots of people have very passionate feelings about this. Not from a homophobic perspective, let me be clear, but from a what this means for the church, what this oh, means Oh, a lot of for, people with a homophobic perspective as well. They do, but I'm not here to platform We're, that. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm here to platform nuance in this discussion on what this means for the church, what this means for other queer people, what this means for queer people in the church and queer people out of the church. Like, that kind of discussion is what we're going to have. Again, no tolerance for homophobia here. Um so the reason that this has gained the traction that it has is that the person on the right, his name is Charlie Bird. He's a relatively famous, I would say, um, within the Mormon community. Um, he used to be the BYU mascot, and he's a the phenomenal cougar. dancer. Um, very, I mean, extremely talented. Yeah, if you've ever seen the dance or the cougar dancing, that would be him. 
and he, it's not him anymore but yeah, yeah when they were going viral yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. over the past couple years oh if for you've sure. seen the byu cougar you that was him that was him and so he's a very talented and phenomenal dancer um just i mean very byu is lucky to have him um so he rose to kind of like mormon stardom a little bit and people are very familiar with who he is he has like i want to say like 160,000 or so followers on instagram which again we're talking about in the mormon sphere of like famous like your average person it probably isn't going to know what um they are so charlie is on the right ryan is his husband who is on the left um also hair goals hair goals for sure like they're both just beautiful human beings like just gorgeous humans um so nonetheless the reason that this has garnered so much attention um is because ryan and charlie are married um they got engaged i think it was last year and married last year i think it was along the same or maybe not i can't remember the timeline it was within the last two years or so um and so they are both to my knowledge and charlie specifically active within mormonism they go to church on sundays they want to participate charlie's talked often about how he wants to be an active member of the church and is very passionate about being a mormon um and want i mean he wrote a book he wants there to be space for mormons within the church um and like a safe accepting space i should say um and so the they also there's like so many nuances here that i don't even know where to start but the reason that this all started garnering attention was because john delin did a podcast where this is how he advertised it married gay mormons get callings and the sacrament so full disclosure i wanted to develop my own opinions before i watched john's podcast i have not watched it yet okay i've seen like two clips i think we've and not had time to do that we have not so. had time to do that and i have somewhat of an understanding so the reason that they were able to verify that these two are actually getting and taking the sacrament was because john sent gerardo which is one of his staff and kara former staff member also known as nuance ho who we love to the church the ward that these two attend to see if they were taking the sacrament now that in and of itself has brought up some feelings for people because again like like most people do not all like most people do in the space that we exist in we like to have verified information that we can say with 100 percent accuracy or pretty close to 100 percent accuracy and if we don't know with 100 percent accuracy then we disclose that generally that's generally how we like to operate i feel like john is very similar he's very open when things are speculative and when things aren't a hundred percent um so in my brain i'm sure that is why he sent them to the church to see if they were actually taking the sacrament um so that they could have verification that they were in fact attending and they were in fact taking the sacrament now remember within mormonism if you're not following the rules you can't take the sacrament it is something that gets taken away from you so like you know, if you had sex before marriage, if you, you know, did something like you were watching porn, like, you know, our yeah. typical offenders that we see that usually people talk about, right? Like, you wouldn't be able to take the sacrament. So. I want to add something. Add. Which is a little bit interesting here. When we say that you're, you can't take the sacrament, there's really nothing stopping you from doing it anyway. No, there's really like, not, but your bishop you tells will, you not Yeah, to. your bishop will tell you, and you know you're, you're not supposed to, and your bishop knows that you're not supposed to, and he will see that you do it in spite of that, but I have no clue what would be done if you defied the bishop. Maybe he would say, don't come to sacrament meeting or something, but, I mean, I pass the, sacra the sacrament to members for several years of my life, and never once did the bishop ever like assign someone to not give the sacrament to a certain person. Yeah, you would not or know. Or anything like, they like would that. Just That's refuse. not something, yeah. So, I don't know. You, you can kind of take it with a grain of salt, but also, I don't know. Anyway, just wanted to add that. So, that being said, these two did not get married in the temple because you they cannot. can't. 
if you are in the church, if you're Mormon, if you want a temple recommended, generally speaking, you cannot be in a what they would term a same-sex relationship, yeah. whether it be married or not. Now, one of the hallmarks of one of the things that I think Charlie's done with his platform is he's talked about how he waited for marriage. So that is a big talking point of his. Sacrament is like Mormon communion. Essentially, is how I would explain it. For I don't even. I don't even know I what do you can commit. Yeah, what you can compare it to. So I have no. Yes, it's essentially the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just bread and water. Yeah. Um, and it instead of like you like it gets passed around by boys instead. Um, so that being said, where was I going? I can't remember where I was at. He waited. Oh yeah. Until marriage. So he took a very traditional Mormon path to also having what the church would term a same sex marriage. Like they didn't have sex before marriage, allegedly based on what he said. I incline to believe what he says. If he feels like that's important to share, then more power to him. So he took a very traditional path like a Mormon would if they were going to get married in the temple. So they did everything right, let's say, by Mormon standards. However... It doesn't matter because the church doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that is still sinful in the eyes of the church. And if you are in a woman-woman relationship or a guy-guy relationship or... They don't recognize any other relationships that exist out of outside of heteronormativity. So None. essentially being married to another man is the same as not being married to another man when it comes to what you do in the bedroom. And generally speaking, if you get married to somebody that is the same gender as you, as the church would purport, right? You're probably likely going to get excommunicated. We see it all constantly the time. If you get married to somebody, like if you are in a lesbian relationship and you get married, your butt's probably going to get kicked to the curb by the church. So... This is very interesting. Yes, and to to Sage Point also, like, outside that binary, there is none. Like, no recognition of trans people, non-binary people, like, the likes. The church is not there, and I don't know that they ever will be. So because people, generally gay people who get married, get excommunicated, when this came across my feed, I had some feelings. (laughs) And I'm not here to fault either of these two because I don't think these two are not the problem, in my opinion. No. I don't think they're doing harm to some people that might be argued, and that's valid. But this is what's confusing to people is, okay, so I actually had a mom message me on Instagram and say that her son got married, wanted to stay in the church, and they tried, and they were excommunicated. They were two gay men. Um so it brings the question of why so not only are they able to take the sacrament which judging by the temple questions that they're being asked generally speaking they shouldn't and getting callings means you have to be worthy you have to be checking the boxes you have to be doing what you're supposed to do and then the church gives you a volunteer opportunity basically to serve the church in some way hi baloney (laughs) jesus um So that's what's confusing people is, okay, so if that's generally what happens, then why are these two getting the sacrament, which many, many in the church would consist, would consider to be a privilege and two, same thing with callings and three, they're not being excommunicated. So we go to what we usually go to, which is Bishop Roulette, right? Yeah. Um, they have a really sounds like amazing and understanding bishop which was confirmed by john that this is not a situation where the bishop and the stake president don't know according to john who knows somebody who's in the ward both the stake president and the bishop are aware of these two and what they're doing so it's not a they don't know type situation but the rules still stand the cats are being like chaotic i'm pretty sure is what just happened Um, Baloney hopped in a box. So 
the lowlies in a box in a box. Lots of people are confused and have some feelings because they're like, okay, so why are they doing this for these two? What about all the people that they've excommunicated up to this point? What about all the people that are on the docket to be excommunicated now? Because this isn't a dated yeah. practice. This isn't something that they did like 10 years ago and they're deciding if they want to do it again. This is something that's ongoing now. This happens all the time. And so why are these two getting what some would refer to as preferential treatment? Yeah. And is it just because Charlie holds more of a platform than your average gay couple in the church? That That's the camp that I sit in. Um, we've discussed at length the ways that um, influencers have received preferential treatment um, and just because that this couple is not the normal um, heteronormative couple that we usually see when we're talking about these influencers, um, I don't I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Do I think the scope of it is different? Yes, entirely. I think that the the tolerance that the church has in regard to this situation is much lower than it would be for other influencers because of the queerness. But other than that, I, I'm in the camp where I think they are getting preferential treatment mm -hmm. in a way, in a sense, because like you, you went over Bishop roulette and when, when you're an influencer and you're not wearing your garments, you know, it's kind of easy, whatever. You went over stake president roulette, which would be the next step up. But something like this, I feel like it is just waiting for the other shoe to drop where somebody above the stake president and area 70 or even one of the 12, because they do live in Utah, might take issue with it and make some changes in the leadership so that they have somebody who will do their bidding because it's not the first time that they've done that. They have sacked bishops or stake presidents who wouldn't do what the the leadership or what the current doctrine dictates, which would be to excommunicate um, these people. These people is kind of a, a weird way to say it, but uh, to excommunicate queer Mormons just because they are not subjugating themselves to the life that the church has basically asked them to live and be against their own personality and who they truly are. I'm never going to say that there's a one size fits all method for a queer member of the church for what works for them because they're simply not. And that's why there has to be yeah. lots of nuances to discussion, this discussion because it's important that we talk about the queer experience as a marginalized experience and as doubly marginalized within the church, I feel like, to like a more extreme. But the bottom line, like for me, is unfortunately, like the ethicalness, I think, comes up of is it okay to like encourage this behavior and be supportive of not the gayness because y'all know we love gayness up in here we 100 percent support the gayness we're here for it let's go um but should the church be or people within the church be trying to create space for queer people in this sense like giving callings allowing to get married like that kind of thing because it's creating like some people and i there's one person in mind that i'm thinking of as i'm talking about this who has said that it's not ethical to continue to try to draw people to or keep people in a space that's actively harming them because the church does actively harm queer people yeah i i i agree with that and so do we is it okay that this is happening? Because, it, and this is where me as a therapist, I have to have my nuance kind of take here because I want people, I want queer people to have safe spaces wherever they are. And so there's a part of me that loves this because there's a part of me that's like, maybe one day the church does evolve. 
But the other part of me that has left Mormonism, that has done my research, that has pulled the church apart bit by bit, and as a queer person myself who grew up in the church and had lots of shame tied to my queer experiences as a teenager, like, knowing the church leadership as it sits right now, they're not going to change. Like, I... I can pull up right here the most heinous quotes about LGBTQ people from people alive just months ago. <laughs> alive just people recently. Like this is not like an old dated practice. Yeah. Like when when it comes to the priesthood ban on African descent men and the temple ban of all black folks within the church that is like they can at least distance themselves from that situation because most of the people who were around at that time are essentially gone in some capacity but every single member of the quorum of the 12 apostles was alive when that was in effect but this is something that's ongoing something they're talking about every conference yeah unfortunately in every issue of the enzyme Yes. So. And so it doesn't seem realistic to think that the church's leadership is going to change its tune. I mean, we had the musket fire talk from Elder Holland where he talked about things that I can't even say for YouTube terms of service. Yeah. And that was only, you know, what, two, three years ago. And so and there are more subtle things going on on the national level. And then you have the fifth Sunday lessons that are happening in church. And you have the mm-hmm. bishops who are chastising queer youth. And we have the, you know, so it's a very weighted and heavy topic, especially given the suicide rate of youth in Utah. Like youth ha- like Utah has the highest suicide rate of teenagers in the nation. And there's something to be said for, I think that's why we get so intense. A lot of us about these topics is we feel the heaviness. And I'm not saying that Charlie and Ryan don't feel that. I feel like they do. Yeah. I feel like that's part of why they do what they do because yeah. everybody wants that to stop. Nobody wants that. I mean, arguably people in our space and I would include Charlie and Ryan as people who don't want that to happen anymore. But that's why this is so heavy because it's like, are we creating a space where we're allowing youth and people to hang on and stay in a space that's causing more harm and has the potential to cause more damage than if they were just not involved in it at all. And I can see the other side of it for people who love Mormonism to death and are desperate for it in their lives, which I can respect in some sense because everybody has their preferences. And I can see how devastating it would be to be put in a position where you feel like you have to choose. You have to choose between the love of my life, who I care about so deeply, and the church that I love and have based my life in and maybe even served a mission for and, you know, went to the church university and did all these things. And so I can see the intensity of the, and the heaviness of the decision that he's having to make. And I don't know that there's a right or wrong decision here. This is just more of a conversation. The other point that we need to bring up is now that this has been discussed, these two were taking the sacrament and we're having a calling If they weren't on the excommunication chopping block, they sure as shit are now. Yeah. Because all this has done is draw massive attention to the two of them. And I'm not even going to title this video with them. I'm not going to put their pictures in it because I don't feel it's appropriate. No. Um, So we're already having this discussion. Mormon Stories has already had this discussion. Maybe somebody would be mad that we continue to further it, and that's fine. But I think... I wanted to have space to discuss this from a more nuanced perspective and not a why the hell are they doing this? This is so stupid. Don't they know the church isn't true and that everybody that is in church leadership hates them? Like, yes, they know that, you guys. Like, they, I think they know that on some level. Yeah. That there are lots of people in church leadership who do not respect them in this way. But I also have seen comments from friends of Charlie's that have said that he's been working with church leadership to try to make change. And he did a speech where he talked about how he got his impression was he got communication from God that told him that this is his purpose to help make space for people like himself in the church. And so when you have a calling like that, that feels like it's from God, that is a very heavy burden to carry. And so this is the purpose of what I wanted to just bring this up for today was just to create a nuanced space. I don't think there's a right or wrong thing here as a therapist. Like I'm always going to try to look at situations and go, 
there's no one size fits all and everybody needs to do what's best for them regardless of what everybody else has to say about it. And I hope that that's the position that ultimately the two of them have taken. And they've gotten a lot of hate. Like, they get a lot of hate from members. They do. Like, yeah. There, there's, there are no I lack mean, even, of members in their comments saying horrible shit. Yeah. And I, you take the Twitter and you can find... I would doubt that they, the Twitter Mormons have said worse things about these two men than they have about Jordan's boss. Oh, <laughs> but God, yeah. I have seen the absolute, like, worst things said about Jordan's boss oh, yeah. on Twitter. Because my boss is a, like, progressive, if you will, Mormon therapist who does her therapist duty, which is either help people, which is just help people where they're at. You want to stay? Great. You want to stay. You want to leave? Great. You want to leave. Like, and that's my position. If I get a client that comes to me that says, I want to stay in the church, then I'm like, I'm firmly rooted. Let's help you stay in the church in a healthy way. And then there's going to be people who question the ethics of that and if it is a healthy thing. But I always have to default back to self-determination. Each individual person has the right to make their own choices. And it's not my job to push my belief system and my questioning of the church's things onto them as valid as it might be. Because for them, it doesn't matter. Because that's not what they're coming to me for. But people look at my boss and attack her. And we've seen, I mean, God, we almost did a video about my boss like years ago. Yeah. Because of the stuff that she gets, that gets tossed around about her on the internet. And so my boss was Julie Hanks, for those of you that don't know. Um, And so to see this, I mean, they're getting similar treatment. They are not withheld from criticism within the church but you do primarily see people in their comments who are supportive i want you to come sit with us at church you always have a space with us like you're safe here and i love that yeah just the unfortunateness of it is i don't think it's a representation of the church as it is yeah and i desperately want like i love what charlie describes when he talks about like the gospel and the way that i think it should be Because I think it's inclusive and it's diverse and it's welcoming and it's accepting and all that to say it's not Mormonism. Like, and that's ultimately what it comes down to, not as a therapist, but as a personal, like human with a personal opinion is it's, it's not Mormonism. Like I so desperately want it to be. And we so desperately wanted it to be when we were trying to stay, but it's not. And it's like, I just, I don't know. There's... This is a conversation where if I was having it with someone like a client, it would be a very parts focused conversation where there are lots of feuding and cooperating parts of ourselves that are trying to process this information in a healthy way. And so this is not to criticize them in any way. I respect them and what they're doing if they feel like it's the best thing for them and it's not harming anybody. But there's always going to be people who are going to question whether that's the case. But I don't think at the end of the day, I don't think that's their intent at all. Yeah. I I would agree on on some level and Jordan has a duty to offer way more nuance than I do. I'm just <laughs> Joe Schmo. I talk to a three year old all day. I gotta let the dogs off the leash sometimes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and not in a bad way, not in a bad way. Don't get me wrong. Um, May, welcome to the Telestial Kingdom oh, from sweetie, the Terrestrial no. Kingdom. Yes, that is my And boss. also, um, oh yeah, you, you joined and then upgraded. Nice. Um, so, um, I guess in a, the view that I have is unfortunately <laughs> really kind of pessimistic when it comes to the church and, queer folks being able to exist within the church because as it stands right now we are decades in my honest opinion we're decades from any sort of um like measurable change Mm -hmm. so when i see people that are able to find a way within the church like these very handsome men are (laughs) are able to do it it makes me nervous for them, honestly, because if they are able to find that sense of belonging within the church, I feel like in this situation, 
it might be the kind of belonging that ebbs and flows. Yeah. And happiness that quite possibly might be temporary, especially in this situation. Because next week, that bishop could be out, and the next bishop is like, or the high counselor ca council finally decides, yeah, we're not doing this, and they call him in for a little court of love, and they get excommunicated. Which it doesn't is doesn't matter that there's two leaders that yeah, are okay with this. Which puts them in a really difficult situation, because I can see where they're coming from. These are two men who likely still are very much believers in what the Book of Mormon has to say and the fact that Joseph Smith um, was the prophet of the restoration mm -hmm. and that the the church's version of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the one true version that has and all the other versions are fractured or missing parts and they only have the priesthood. And then you have to come to a point where you either say, yeah, uh, I love my husband and I'm not going to do this anymore, which is essentially what ex-Mormons are demanding, for lack of a better term, that queer folks do, which yeah. is difficult because it is the central tenet of your life. You have to forsake that and just leave it all behind because it's not compatible with your life. I don't want it to have to be like that. That sucks. And then on the other hand, they get forced into that by the very church that they're going and visiting and attending, which sucks. So Sam M, thank you for the gifted membership. I don't know. There's it's such a difficult situation. It's such a difficult conversation to be had because I mean, this is people's lives. Yeah. We I felt like I gave up everything when I left the church. Mm -hmm. It was such an unstable time for us. We were trying to avoid conversations with with family members we were avoiding close friends and it's not fun <laughs> and it, to have that and have it made worse by the fact that you were excommunicated or or something just because of who you are is is I, I can't even imagine how much more difficult that would be. So I don't know. It It's hard. I understand that it's hard for them, but it is also kind of a privileged situation that I feel like can be a little bit damaging to some people because they might think, hey, if they can do this, then I can. And they live authentically as themselves. And then they get hit with the second situation where they're essentially getting ousted from their entire faith and mm -hmm. potentially their families and friends. Uh, so it's, it's difficult. Well, and the, you know, it's, I don't know that. I mean, I respect John as a content creator a hundred percent. I don't know that I would have been ballsy enough to do this. Oh, yeah, that's something else we have to talk about. I, I think we just briefly touched on it before I, I said that, but for those who weren't here or to jog everybody's memories, in order to... Let, let me put this back up on screen real quick. In order to... So these are believing Mormons. They were not in contact with John or anything of the sort, and in order for John to be able to obtain this information, he sent Gerardo, who works for him, Great guy, does a lot of good stuff for Mormon stories. Notably is also <clears throat> gay. Yep. And Kara, otherwise known as Nuanto, who used to uh, be co-host on Mormon Stories podcast. And they went to the ward where they attend and they were able to, with their eyes, find out this information. Um, so go ahead. So I think there's, I mean, just on this post alone, like there's some comments that um, stood out because from my understanding, again, we haven't watched it, but from my understanding, there was no input from Ryan or Charlie on this episode. Like they weren't, they may have been contacted, but generally if you're a believing member of the church and you get yeah. contacted by John DeLynn. John DeLynn like, is the devil. So like it, it, they... You're staying far away from him. Like it took me years yeah. into my even thinking about venturing into like progressive Mormonism before I 
Like I didn't touch anything from John until we were almost out the door. Um, and so, you know, lots of people are saying like, it feels kind of gross. Like, you know, it's intimate details about their personal like faith journey. And did you have like screenshots of comments? I was just I, gonna... I won't see the same ones that you will. No, I didn't in... screenshot any of these, but I did see the photographer who took these photos, which I don't know if this is from their engagement or their wedding. Um, but the photographer said, crazy to see my photograph used like this. Knowing Charlie personally, in addition to being his wedding photographer, I just want to share Charlie has been working tirelessly and meeting with church leaders for over six years to bring about change in the church. He and Ryan may be the first to enjoy the privileges, but I hope it's the start of a rollout of changes the church is planning on making due to his discourse due to his discourse with them i'm ex-mormon by the way i don't support the oldest church but i do support people trying for happiness on their own chosen path and so you know i have a bit of i mean i see some contention here because like if the church is trying like if this is truly the church trying to do like a rollout program like you can't roll out humans y'all <laughs> yeah like that that's not how this works and so you know it and it's it's the church kind of weaponizing these two to their advantage to be like, well, look, we let these like without even saying anything, because yeah. I don't think this is going to last. And I think the church will ultimately excommunicate them, but it's kind of using them as their battering ram right now. And yeah. they're being villainized yeah. because they get the privileges when all the other gay people who have been excommunicated aren't. Yeah. And so if that's what they're doing. Like, I don't think that's Charlie and Ryan's doing, but the church is just not approaching this in an appropriate way. And I don't think they're intending no, to I do think, this. No, I think I think they're trying to sow deceit and infighting and the the very first thing that I thought of when when I heard this initially was when they in 2019 when they changed the honor code mm -hmm. to not explicitly say that you could that, like being in a same sex relationship or any sort of like contact for lack of I don't even know what what the wording was um with somebody of the the same sex was against the honor code and then a bunch of people started living authentically they were able to bring their relationships into the light of day and then they came back the following week not even an entire week had passed and they said oh no that is still against the honor code it's just not written anymore and suddenly all of these people had wait we're having audio issues oh shit are we good now i think it might have been i think it's youtube i'm sorry everybody i haven't touched anything so input wise nothing nothing would have changed um anyway keep going so they had come back a, like a week later and said no it's still against the honor code you will still be disciplined for that kind of behavior quote unquote but um all of these people had begun to live authentically and out of themselves to the public and it was like I mean, they just chummed the waters because a lot of these people, and I'm not going to say every single person at BYU is this way, but we've all seen this, the man on the street interviews of BYU students. There are some fucking freaks that attend that school and it does not foster a safe environment no. when they do that kind of thing. So this is the kind of thing that I, scary. this is exactly why I'm, I'm nervous about this kind of a situation where I don't think that is their intention or whatever. And like this photographer had commented, Charlie's been working for years and years, as long as Jordan and I have been married, to make some changes. And great. I feel like six, uh, you know, more power to him. But six years feels like there should have been some sort of measurable moving of the needle. Everyone's but I don't. Head. Did the cord come out? Oh, it did. Jordan. I didn't on. even do anything. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> Jordan's mic's off. Yeah, her mic was unplugged. I swear I didn't do anything. It was, it was probably kazoo. 
<laughs> I, I hate to throw him under I the bus. I didn't do but anything. He does like to when he because all of his toys are down here. He does like to come over here and pretend he's singing. So. Okay. Well, anyway, but that's the scary. I mean, that's yeah. the thing that makes me worried for them. Also, is is this potentially a church strategy to bring people out of the woodwork and say, "I want Welcome, the calling. Amy. I want like." Yeah. I'm thinking about like getting married to my partner. I yeah. want to participate. Like, you know, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you're putting yourself on the line. And I don't, den- I don't doubt that either of them have not seen people in their vicinity be excommunicated for, for sure. the same thing. So they're really putting it on the line. And I, I commend them for that. And now it's I mean, hard. I honestly, knowing what we know about the church and how it operates, and regardless of even the best, most supportive bishops and stake presidents cannot save you from church leadership. They do not care. One, yeah, once they decide that you're done, you're, you're done. You're done. And it doesn't matter what, you know, it, I mean, it, speaking of John, I mean, I feel like it kind of went similarly with John's excommunication. Yeah. Like, a lot of the decisions, I mean, he, I mean, you can go listen to all of his bishops interviews and everything, but I think the decisions ultimately get made at the top and then the bishops in charge are charged with you carry out this decision. And if you can't, we boot you and put somebody who will. Yeah. And that's, yeah, cause that, that's, thing. that's where I remember that, that from was they had a, a change and then all of a sudden that state president was really and that's what worries on. me for their bishop yeah. and their stake president is the church doesn't care like if the church and the stake if the bishop and the stake president in this case are like no we're going to stand by and support them which is admirable and i respect then i would move like they're they will move them out of the way and they will just replace them with bishops and stake presidents who are homophobic and will implement exactly what the church wants them to implement and so that's what scares me for them is even if their church leadership supports them, that does not mean the church won't move them out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, it's. Um, Caroline McKay is pulling up the post from today. That's not from today. That's pinned. That's their engagement oh, that's, post. How do you know there's pin? Because I was just looking at his account. Oh, it has to be that tree one right there. The tree one? In the middle. You can pin four posts on Instagram. God damn it. I got to log Let in. Let me s- screenshot it and I'll send it to you. Yeah, screenshot it. I was we'll... just looking at his account. How did I not see this? I was just I'm looking not... at it right before. Like, I'm literally still on his page right now. There you go. Ah, oh, what was I going to say? Caroline, I hate to say it, but you kind of derailed my thought train there. Damn it, Caroline. Yeah. Um, But just uh, in a similar vein, I mean can't remember exactly when john started up mormon stories i feel like it was probably like are he, you talking about there was no post today no posts is it on his instagram stories is it a story oh post? it was a story okay sorry caroline thank you so he posted today a picture of the utah mountains it appears and it says Here, just take a, a screenshot and i'll put it up there okay but I mean, John was doing Mormon stories for years. He was on the church's radar. They even approached him in regard to the uh, the gospel topics essays, which are apologetics uh, for difficult topics with church history and things. Um, and he, I think, helped them out a little bit in some capacity. Uh, and then, so that was probably 2002 or 2004 that he started up. Mormon stories and then in 2014 he was excommunicated so he was going for a decent amount of time was it 2014 oh I don't know I don't remember it was in the 2010s so he was doing it for at least 10 years um, before they finally pulled the trigger Um, and it, it could go similarly with with these guys okay so I literally just screenshotted this this is from two hours ago Today Hold is... on, yeah, they're not on. It's not on the screen. Hold on. Oh my gosh! Don't hate on me. I'm working as fast as I can here. Okay, today has been horrible and scary and shocking and disappointing, yet somehow there were still small miracles. So I mean, it doesn't surprise me given the. Was there anything else? No, um, he said something about how like last night was better because they had family home evening or something. Um, <laughs> I have to give my obligatory. <laughs> 
Hey, it, I, I mean, it looks like they just went ice skating. Sucked. So, I mean, 23K views on the Mormon Stories podcast. Um, I mean, that's not like gigantic. No, man, it's really not. It, in the Utah sphere, that is a lot. So, and you know, I haven't, again, we haven't watched, it's only an hour and a half. Um, and so, you know, there's also a comment that I did want to make from a, you know, from a privilege perspective, not at like Charlie and Ryan specifically, but just in general, there have been comments that have been made by women in the church who are in relationships with other women and who wanted to stay, wanted to take the sacrament, wanted to do all these things and were not able to. And so I think there's also something to be said for the privilege, the inherent privilege that men still have over women in some regards. It's not to say that queer men aren't still marginalized and discriminated against because they absolutely are. Yeah. But there is something to be said for women. Um, Because the men hold the priesthood. Indeed. So, unfortunately, the church is struggling for priesthood holders. So, I feel like that might be a factor that uh, is being added in. Ara, thank you for the, the super sticker, super chat. Um, somebody mentioned that he's a therapist. I did see that. I think I knew that. I don't know. The term clinical therapist to me doesn't mean anything. I need to know, like, are you like a like like are you a marriage and family therapist? Are you a social worker? Are you a clinical men like are you a clinical mental health counselor? Like I don't know. Um, but we love. We need more therapists who are part of marginalized populations because hell yeah utah especially needs people like that um so there's lots of comments on the i'm looking at the mormon stories episode and lots of comments on like you know privilege the church is desperate to keep people which i don't think is true i don't think the church will ever be desperate enough to change their opinion on gay marriage um So Ivana in a super chat says, I don't know why Charlie and Ryan think the church is ever going to change. TBN mother said the church never changes ever. I guess in a sense, I I understand why they would have hope because (laughs) the, your TBN mother is absolutely wrong. The church has changed so much from what it (laughs) used to be. So in that sense, I can see why they would have hope that things change, but how, however, there are too many old homophobic men in the church government right now, and it will take a long time for them to die out. Um, so that's why I say when I say that they're likely decades from any measurable change happening, that's that's what I'm meaning. Um, interesting. So people are saying he's not licensed. He just received education. So maybe he's finishing school. There you go. Yeah. Um. Because, I mean, you, you look at the priesthood ban situation, there were actual repercussions that were impending on this situation and unrest within the church and without the church because of um, the civil rights movement that had happened a decade prior and all of the consequences that were building up because of that change in American government and culture. And this, I don't really feel like there's as much going on because it seems like anybody who puts any pushback, anybody in a place of power that puts any pushback either doesn't really care or is trying to gain or like score some points with their supporters. So... I looked him up in the licensing system and I don't see anything. If he just finished school, then his license wouldn't be in the system. But like I looked myself up just to make sure and I pull up because I'm not fully licensed. I'm associate licensed. So the state is wrong. (laughs) Yeah. With the state wrong, literally. LOL. Um, But so maybe he's just starting. Could be. Because it, Utah has a licensing system that you can pull up anyone. Like, I can pull up my boss. I can pull up, you know, Jody Hildebrand. I can pull up 
whoever like it keeps a record of like if your license has been taken away if it was ever like if you gave it up if it was ever you know you stopped working or retired or whatever like all my stuff is on here it says if there's been disciplinary action or not which I think is good and should be available to the people um so maybe he just started he could very very well well be yeah I don't know when you graduated because you got to apply for your associate's license in Utah um but if he didn't want to do clinical practice, then he wouldn't be licensed. Probably not. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, like, if he wants to do just nonprofit work, there are some people who choose not to. I think there's value in getting licensed either way, just in case you changed your mind. But that's just, like, my personal opinion. Anyway, to bring it back around on the uh, the Mormon Stories episode, I got to hold their feet to the fire a little bit. It is weird behavior to be going out or even sending people out. Like I understand John would be noticed and that's why he didn't do him himself, but sending people out to essentially, I mean, there's no getting around it. It was, they were spying on these people unknowingly. Yeah. It's gross behavior. And we criticize the church all the time for being so, um, so interested in the membership's lives in the toxic culture that they've created in looking like a hawk for these little signifiers of somebody's unworthiness because we're just constantly looking for something to nitpick at and then when we as ex-mormons go and do the same thing especially as people who are criticizing the church for that very thing it's this was a bold move. Bold move. Um, not a, not a cute one, in, in my icky. opinion. I feel like we could have done a better job. And now the potential target that has been painted on their, their backs, I feel like it, the story could have had the same punch to it if we were just speculating that they were. Yeah. Because, I mean... I would feel a little bit better about it if they went and sat in the parking lot and s- tried to see if they could see him walking in the, the church. No, they went in the building. But being in the building and seeing them taking the sacrament well, I is was confused a bridge too far. Because I follow Kara and I think Sage also, one of our mods, pointed out. Like I saw Kara post on Instagram that she was back at church and she was with Gerardo. So I assumed it was Mormon Stories related. But I had no idea what yeah. it actually entailed. Um, and it... I mean, Gerardo, I feel like, would be less recognized, but Kara, I feel like, gets recognized. Yeah, because she's on. she was on TikTok. And she and, was on Mormon yeah. Stories for a while. And so, you know, I feel like that was a bit of a risk also. But, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I'm not a fan. I'm a fan of, like, you know, getting information accurately and honestly when we can't obtain it. But was it? obtained ethically yeah, no I, I don't know i don't it's think kind so of, i mean it's just kind of creepy in my mind a little bit like i see what he was trying to do i i don't think the intent was bad at all um like we've worked with john i have a lot yeah. of respect for john but this was a weird Th- this, this was is, a weird one for me this was not the play for me honestly I, when, when jordan told me that i was like are you kidding me and seems like and then targeting and then if we are going to go with the this is a good story yeah paparazzo behavior honestly um it's i I mean it is news to hear that the seemingly that the church is changing i it's something that we we should talk about for sure um but now the reaction will be oh my god they're infiltrating our congregations to see if they're taking I, all I can think is the way that it will be spun in the backlash. So it just, and it, it makes that me wonder, is, that becomes the focus of it, which yeah. sucks. Axe brought up a good point. It makes me wonder if they reached out to them. Regardless if they reached out to them or I, not. That doesn't I, I change my opinion on yeah. that, but I do wonder I, if he I, did reach out at all. I know John would cover his bases. I feel like he would. I feel like he would. I feel like he would have reached out. But obviously, I mean, knowing the reputation that John has within the member community, it doesn't, I mean, it's unsurprising if they didn't want to discuss it. 
need to watch this episode to see why they went to church. Gerardo said that they had been accused of talking about them without knowing anything, and Gerardo decided just to just go see. Even even that, it's still inappropriate. So, I, I mean, oh, so they were accused of talking. Yeah. So they were mad that John was talking about there them were without knowing mad, for yeah. sure. So they yeah, went that, to see for sure. That is, yeah, that that is not something that is really like important to the. Well, and that's just part of it. Like people are going to be pissed off that you're talking yeah. about shit like this. Like, it just yeah, whatever you do, it like, yeah. But let's know, let's do the less gross thing. <laughs> I it does feel a bit the less weird thing misguided. I mean, maybe I'm missing parts. Maybe there are things they didn't share with the public. But I like to. Give... <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're comfortable with sharing with the public. Oh, I don't know. They should probably share the other part if that. Maybe exonerates them. I mean, it, reaching out to them and them not responding wouldn't exonerate them. But I would no. hope that they at least tried to do that. So if they were able to share their part of the story, if they wanted to. But I mean, this this furthers the contention between the church yeah. members and us and people like John, because we get. I mean, we're different than John, and we operate different than John. We operate similarly, also, but. We honestly get, I mean, we get lumped into the, like, all the ex-Mormon podcasters kind of get lumped into similar categories, and it's not a great look. Yeah. But churches are kind of public places, though, in a sense. Oh, for sure. I in mean, a sense. It, it wasn't illegal. No, not at all, but it is essentially accosting somebody in a public space. Um I mean, it's and, and, the informed consent. Yeah, and the nuance kind of changes when it's... You're going into a place that you have decidedly made a, a choice to never go again. You don't want to be a part of that. There's really no reason for you to be there. I don't especially have any with a church building again. <laughs> especially without like the other people that you're there for knowing. <laughs> so I don't think they took a photo of them. I mean, if I I'd been hope accused, they didn't. if I'd been accused of lying, I probably like there was part of me that would probably check and maybe check, but then I don't know if I would share that information. Just for like my own validity yeah. of like, you know, but I don't know. We weren't in his shoes, but I yeah. mean, as content creators, this is something that I don't think I'd be willing to do. Yeah. Well, and as public public figures, the public has the right to speculate. And if you don't want to set the record straight necessarily, it it is your right to do so. But then the the public also has the right to speculate. We could have, he could have, because John's done all the time where he said he's gotten confirmed and validated reports of things, but he won't give up his, like, intel. He doesn't share anything about the person giving yeah. the information. Which would be different, because if it is someone who is already in church with them. But I don't know, even in that sense... Like, I am already just, I hate the idea that people are watching another person, in this case, partake in a communion that they have with their God and seeing if they do it or not as an indicator that they're worthy to do that. Because inherently, you are worthy to do whatever you choose to do. That but, is not value that is imbued by but, any sort of upper higher power but. i can see the haters in the comments going you guys do the same thing with garments i guess but you wear garments all the time yeah this is some, i mean sacraments are really yeah. shame thing it, it's sacrament was it's a shame the thing. the added shame of of that because i was horrified every time i couldn't take the sacrament yeah and I was always worried the people around me were watching because they are, I mean, you're passing it next to you and the people next to you are saying that you're not taking it. And so that's shamey. I think garments have maybe become a different conversation. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm trying to exonerate myself, but I mean, we yeah. try, that's why we try to have hey. these conversations. Honestly, like we're content creators. Nobody does it perfectly. I don't think John's intent was bad. I don't think John's intent yeah. really has ever been bad when it comes to what he does in this space. I think sometimes just like we've had mistakes, sometimes execution goes poorly. Yeah. And sometimes our desire, because, you know, we have a strong desire to prove Mormons wrong a lot of times, you know? Yeah. And so sometimes I think that gets the better of us because we want to be like, no. Yeah. It's just hard because, I mean, these are the people who are, are going to the church and who are living 
the reality every day, but they're not the people who are imposing that reality. Litterbox Hero, important point, going in secret with the intent to publicize what they observed. That feels off to Nikki. Yeah. Because we're public about what we do. Like, I'm judging you. <laughs> I'm judging you. That's, I mean, it's fair. I am. I'm judging you with the pictures you're posting on Instagram yeah. with your whether you're wearing your garments. Because I don't care if you're like, titties out, go for it, girly. I love that for you. But... It's always like a, oh, I can tell that you're not wearing yeah. garments. Based on the information you choose to put online. Yeah. These two didn't well, and usually, <laughs> And usually I'm not like, oh, that's where I see the differences. This is looking at people to see if they're worthy. Because I was, I mean, all of us, we were on the receiving end of that. And it's embarrassing and it's yeah. awful. And when we're looking at influence or, or whatever, it's we're looking at people who are taking liberties that usually you are not allowed to take when it comes to donning the gar garment and, and things of like that in photos or videos that they are willingly posting. Well, and I hope if they took photos, they don't put them anywhere. I didn't see. No, that'd be like pretty that. inappropriate. And I, I feel like they might even be able to get in trouble if not, maybe just take down requests. Also but. there, there's potential monetary things happening here. I mean, Gerardo is Mormon story staff. So, being paid to obtain this information kara also gets paid for being on the podcast generally um all mormon stories financial information is public and so is there a part of this that's kind of icky because you pay people to yeah. go do this maybe i mean that gives it the kind of the paparazzi vibe yeah and these are these are all criticisms that the detractors are going to bring up oh the, for sure all the pro -Mormon. we're not john haters by any means yeah no no so it's i don't know it's just hard because it it could be a potential backslide um in that i yeah i don't think they would take photos that is just like i mean they took extra, photos of themselves at the church extra but yeah photos of yourselves is one you know, thing whatever but then everybody's curious like what are you doing there like i mean i was curious i didn't ask but i was curious um so yeah so i don't know i think it, i've everybody in the content creation space makes mistakes we're certainly not perfect i think the purpose of this is to kind of just create discourse around it and you know talk about i mean it's important to i think we we honor intent but we can also see the impact of when things go wrong even though yeah. our intent was good um I do worry for them just because this kind of puts a target on their back. They're kind of taking yeah. heat from, like, if you kind of think about it, I mean, honestly, like, we want, like, as ex-Mormons, we want to, like, welcome the queer people who are leaving the church and say, like, you know, this really sucks. We've yeah. been there, but there's a safe Th space this could for be you outside barrier. of the church. But it kind of feels like they're getting attacked on both sides. Like, they're getting attacked by the ex-Mormons, and they're also getting attacked by the Mormons, and everybody in between and so it's kind of like i kind of feel bad because they're kind of getting it from from everyone which isn't a fun yeah. place to be when you feel like you've got it coming at you from both sides so i there are no right answers here your opinions and however you feel about it is valid um i i want to eat my words and say that the two of them aren't on the excommunication chopping block but i am fairly convinced that they are now. I uh, I will not be holding my breath on that one, unfortunately. Uh history history has proven that that would not be wise of me to do. Caroline, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what um he was meaning by having a tough day. I would assume I mean being put on blast like that is probably it's not happened to us. I it's kind of unsettling to say the least so yeah okay so we have a post from oh now the community is really getting involved send that to me i'll put it up on the screen okay so our friends at latter day lesbian they have a podcast if you haven't listened to them send me lovely. the post don't send, don't send me a screenshot um they made a statement i knew this was gonna blow up in our community I knew it. So let's read it. Like I said, I think there is important space that needs to be given to 
queer women yeah in this discussion yeah even though we're not talking about queer women when we're talking about ryan and charlie i think it's still important to discuss shout out to latter-day lesbian um go listen to their podcast if you haven't already yeah what's the one lady's name we picked her up from the airport one time <laughs> i always forget um i think it's shelly shelly it yeah. yeah we picked shelly up from the airport once so you know no biggie with kimberly <laughs> with kimberly yeah she wasn't the person we were going to pick up but but it just worked out uh, yeah we were picking up our friend and she was on the same flight as came as our friend and um they were uh they were just girl just gal palin and uh, um okay so this statement comes from not the latter-day lesbians podcast account this is latter-day les which is kate which is one half of the the other host yeah um shout out kate and i don't know if they i want to say they stopped doing their podcasts they them by the way okay I want to say they did, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. But it's been a I don't listen to podcasts because I don't have time because we have a three year old. So um, don't hate me for that. But we get yelled at. We're going to listen to their perspective on this because I feel like, again, we're going to center queer folks as much as we can in this in this discussion. So I truly Oops, the post says I truly cannot convey how traumatic surviving queer surveillance in Mormonism is, how surviving Mormon is, how surviving Mormon stalking leaves you suspicious and gives you PTSD and how terrifying it is at BYU where you must survive that culture where your whole life can be destroyed by that surveillance and stalking to then go and do it as ex Mormons who claim to be mindful of queer Mormon issues is deeply unsettling and upsetting. And then the caption says, I emphatically and unequivocally denounce Mormon stories, surveillance of Charlie and Ryan, whom I won't even tag and hope they can find peace, rest, safety, and privacy. Queer people deserve privacy. Our private lives are not meant to be discussed in Bishop's offices and interviews. Our private lives are private and deserve respect. Surveilling Charlie and Ryan using their private photos. It is gross and despicable. I can't read the rest of it. I can. You? As a queer Mormon who has been subjected to the trauma of Mormon surveillance, I find this deeply upsetting. I mean, this is fair. I mean, the more the more I'm sitting with it, the more I'm I'm trying to take their perspective. Yeah. I mean, I am a queer woman, so I'm trying to yeah. process this as myself in real time. But I never well, went I, to BYU, so I was this never is, surveilled in that way. Yeah, this is a a um, dimension that I I would never be able to experience without hearing it from anybody else. So I'm I'm agreeing with this. I'm thinking, and just like I was saying a minute ago, I think we're we're kind of villainizing like Ryan and Charlie on both sides of the aisle, which really isn't fair. Um, and I mean, queer surveillance. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm 100% can see this and validate this and I'm, I'm agreeing here. So let me r share with you what was then posted by, um, <clears throat> Mormon stories. So, John, Is I he can throw in shade. I, I can only assume there. it's John. I can only assume because it says I I'll screenshot it because I can't link this to you because it's a story. This is well, not I can. I think cute. John is standing by his decision slash. OK, so it's saying he's saying it was Gerardo's decision in this post. I 100% support Gerardo's decision to follow his conscience. No apologies. Not sorry. I can't. Hold on. I can't pull it up. <laughs> Why won't this come up? That works. Oh, it might be opening over here. Sorry. Sorry. Got it now. <laughs> so everybody can see. This was post. This is Jordan saw this uh, because it is posted on one of you stories. said that and I looked at it. I can't remember which one of you said it, but thank you to whoever it was. So this is on there in the Mormon Stories Instagram account from five hours ago. And it's the Latter-day Les statement that they wrote. And then I 100% support her writer's decision to follow his conscience. No apologies. And then that little thing that says not is a little like it says text not sorry. Yeah. It says not sorry. So, I mean, maybe we're criticizing the wrong person. Maybe this was 100% Gerardo's idea. <laughs> <laughs> I like, don't think John, John would allow this to be posted uh, mm -hmm. if that is not how he felt. I mean, he is the he is the forward facing for the most part of the organization, which is uh, 
kind of disappointing. So, I don't know. Has Gerardo posted anything? Let's see. I don't yeah. think I follow him. Honestly, that response also is really petty and obnoxious and blah, blah. nothing from him has Kara it is john's anything? platform i'm sure if there was an an issue that john would um take it i mean take action the sticker on that, is an animated sticker that says not sorry for those of you that missed that so it's not just not it says yeah not it says sorry. not sorry so when it loops it's like sorry not sorry it is ch it is pretty childish honestly here, yeah, and doubling this. down, the not seeking any any sort of reconciliation or nuance is kind of wild to me. <laughs> but um, I just texted you nothing the post. On, okay. He commented on the Latter Day Les post. Oh, okay. Let me look at that. I had McKay pull up the post from. Kara when they went to the church let's pull this up oh we can see it cool okay so John responded on the latter day Les post and said Gerardo did this of his own accord but as a Mormon conversion therapy survivor I don't question him what the fuck okay I'm going to take issue with Gerardo here. I have his comment. Did <laughs> Were they the ones performing the fucking conversion therapy? No. Sorry for yelling everybody. They're probably heard. We're working through this actively you... right now as you guys are. So. You are you got the wrong guy. I'm sorry. Why are you doing this? Okay, we have context it's from It's fucking Gerardo. corny. We have context from Gerardo. I'm sending it to I want to hear right some now. I got to hear some context cuz I need it to make sense. And right now, doesn't make any sense to me. Let me pull this up. Okay. So this is from Gerardo on um, the Latter day. Sorry Lives for the switching so much. Comment section. You're going to have to make it a little bit bigger. I will. Yeah, I can read. See what I can do here. Thank How's you. How's that? Is that better? Okay. So this is from Gerardo, who works for John. I'm the one who decided to attend their ward last Sunday. I had received multiple reports from people with whom Charlie had shared this with, claiming that this privilege he was receiving was because God blesses him, which if that's the case, that's there's some things to unpack there. Charlie never asked for it to remain a private matter. Charlie also publicly shares the fact that he is active in the church due to Charlie's history of calling me a liar in the past, even though I told the truth about his secret relationship while he was going around giving firesides about being gay and celibate. Oh, there's beef here. Oh, this is uh, this is personal. I decided I wanted to see it for myself before talking about it on the podcast. Charlie's public persona is built on the fact that he is active in the church. Many gay Latter-day Saints who do not enjoy the privileges that Charlie does are suffering, not knowing how Charlie is able to do it. Many of them are likely ostracized by their families who point out who point out at Charlie as an example of being able to stay active in the church. People deserve to know that Charlie is able to stay active because he enjoys privileges most gay Mormons are not currently enjoying. All gay Latter-day Saints have the right to demand the same treatment that privilege white gay Mormons in rich neighborhoods are enjoying. So there are a few points this that he's point. made that I, have, uh, that I agree with. Yep. The, the white aspect definitely does play a part. I think there's part. something here. Yeah. So let's... there. I mean, it seems like there's shade here. It seems like there's some... This might be more deeply personal than we thought it was. Um, so let's let's go to the first part. Somebody said he's wait wait a minute. Someone said is he he's Mary Cosby's cousin? Who is? Because I'll lose my shit if somebody in this situation is related to Mary Cosby. God forbid. Who's Mary Cosby? From Real Housewives. That Mary. Oh. Is that who I'm thinking of? That's correct, right? Unless there's another Mormon Mary Cosby, but that Mary Cosby isn't Mormon anyway. Anyway, so he made the decision. It sounds like John didn't disagree. So this wasn't John's prerogative. So I'm going to release John of some of this. Um, but John, it's also John's. It's John's brand. Brand. 
So there, there's some personal responsibility here. Yes, that Mary. For real? Somebody like link me to some Wait, context. Who is I don't know who's related? related. I don't know if they're talking about Gerardo or Charlie. Anyway. Okay. So multiple reports from people with whom Charlie had shared this with claiming that this privilege he was receiving was because God blesses him. So I do take some issue with that. Yeah. Because and and I had made that comment earlier. Uh, we're very skeptical when people like Tim Ballard say that God has revealed this to them. I'm not going to, you know, suspend my disbelief when suddenly it's someone who I'm more aligned with. Yes. So there's something to be said about that, and like, yeah. Okay, and then Charlie never asked for it to remain a private matter. That I mean, that's probably a factual statement. Did he ask him? I don't know. Um, he does publicly share the fact that he's active in the church. It is practically his entire platform that he's active in the church, yeah. so that's fair. And we've talked about how if you make that part of your platform, you're probably going to be more open to criticism from people because you make it part of your platform. But he's not appealing to people who are going to criticize him, right? Like his followers are people who support him, not the members who think that he's an abomination. Right. Um, so let's go to this history thing. How did I fucking, hang? <laughs> how did I do that? Why did I? Oh gosh. You just shared a picture of our child. Way to go dear. <laughs> yeah. I fucked up. <laughs> That was very brief. It was fine. Um, it was far away. Okay. So due to the history of Charlie calling me a liar in the past, even though I told the truth about his secret relationship while he was going around giving firesides about being gay and celibate, I decided I wanted to see it for myself before talking about it on the podcast. So clearly there's some context here. And yeah. maybe we would get that context if we watched the episode. I understand. We don't have time right now. But... Clearly, this is a personal thing. Um, but it's also not cool to be saying yeah. you're gay and celibate if you're and you're not like in a relationship with another man if you actually are. Yeah. And then being propped up by the church like, because we know that the, historically the church has used situations like that as like a form of po apologetics. They they po they give these people book deals. They. Yeah put them on a pedestal i mean they parade them around like hey look you can be gay and you can be celibate and you can be mormon and happy look at this guy so yeah indeed um charlie's public persona is built on the fact that he's active in the church completely agree many gay latter-day saints who do not know who do not enjoy the privileges that charlie does are suffering not knowing how charlie is able to do it i think there is something to this i think there is something to be said for like his experience is not the traditional Mormon experience. So it's like, you know, it's like when billionaires get up and talk to the working class at a conference and we're like, this is not relatable. And I do, this does not apply to me. And the privileges that you enjoy in your life as a billionaire are not anything that I have ever had access to. So I'm just trying to give this as a parallel to illustrate yeah. the privilege thing, because it's not something that other people can look at and go, yeah, I can stay in the church because I'm getting like I f I'm feeling validated because my bishop wants me there. Yeah. And my bishop is letting me get take the sacrament and, you know, that kind of thing. So I think there's something to be said for the privilege there. Um, and then I think the entire last paragraph really is valid. Many of them are likely ostracized by their families who point at Charlie as an example of being able to stay active in the church, which is probably fair. He is very well-known people deserve to know that charlie is able to stay active because he enjoys privileges most gay mormons are not currently enjoying i think there is something to that yeah I, and that's the whole crux of the issue is this is not the norm this yeah. is not something that everybody can attain especially in places where the culture um at large is not accepting of queer folks, um, especially in, in other countries where the 
the general social culture is less uh, accepting. This is something that would never happen. Yeah. Um, you would never have enough um, support behind anybody um, from the community at large in a lot of cases that it would be something acceptable, especially when you add the Mormon stuff in there as well. Well, and the bottom sentence, all gay Latter-day Saints have the right to demand the same treatment that privileged white gay Mormons in rich neighborhoods are enjoying. I think there is an element of privilege here with wealth. Um, it is very obvious that both of these men come from very wealthy families, and that's not a choice that they made. That is just a privilege that they have. Um, and so is there something to be said for we've and I mean, we've talked about this phenomenon with influencers, like people who have big money in the church, in my opinion, have sway yeah. in some of the things that they do. Like Jordan Page has sway with the church because she's giving the church how much fucking money every year. These influencers who make boohoo bucks have sway with the church because they're lobbing off money left and right. And the church isn't going to be like, nah, we don't want your money. Like, yeah. no, they're greedy bastards just like anybody else. And that's an opportunity to get money. And so if I look the other way because you're not wearing your garments all the time, then mm, so be it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's kind of an element to this here that feels similar. Like, is there a money role here with the two of them coming from wealthy backgrounds? Um yeah, like, you know, how many Mormon influencers have we talked about who don't follow the rules, right? Like, or yeah. who drink or, you know, you've got Lisa Barlow who calls herself Mormon 2.0, right? Like, they they get to still associate themselves with the church and call themselves members and still get some of the benefits of membership that if, you know, somebody who maybe was poorer or didn't have a social media profile or wouldn't get. Yeah. You know, there, there's a question there. Um so I don't, I still don't love the way they went about it. I see the reasoning why he did it. Yeah. I, it kind of does feel like a personal vendetta. It does feel a little personal to me. Um, and I don't know the well, context. This, this is also the kind of thing that we have to be careful of because then uh, it's just a whole intersection of all kinds of issues that can be stirred up because of this. Yeah in it so and i'm not saying that there's necessarily any union behind ex-mormons it's hard to call ex-mormons a community they're when, not like the common <laughs> thing that we share is we formerly attended a church and now we don't it's it's difficult to like really form a community around that so the not sorry post had to have come from john because he talked about gerardo as like in third person like he didn't say i yeah this is my decision he said i respect gerardo's decision or support him yeah. or whatever so so i don't know this is i mean there's a lot it's a messy of moving situation parts here this is messy in the end i don't i don't think that going and confirming that he, they were taking the sacrament is well ad advised I don't think that was the answer necessarily. I also don't know why Kara went. Yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. I don't know. But whatever. Do you? I know. Well, maybe he was looking for something or someone to come with him. And I mean, I wouldn't want to go I know, by myself. I know Kara's <laughs> down for, for anything. I It's it's nerve wracking. I have not set foot in a church. Well, I mean. Since we left. So Yeah. yeah. I would not be comfortable going. I mean, into here's the deal. Building. It was maybe it was it was Gerardo's decision based on what Gerardo was saying, which you know he made his decision, whatever. But they did do a video about it. Yeah. So, I mean, John chose to put it on the Mormon Story channel. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I I feel like if I had information like this, that I maybe would have said I, I had a source that's verifiable and you're yeah. still going to have Mormons who don't believe you. And you know what? You can't do anything about that. Yeah. And there's still going to be people that even though they went, there's still going to be people that say, I don't believe you. You know, like you can't, yeah. you can't get everybody to be like, Oh my gosh. Like, but this is like, Oh man, I feel like this is giving me like, um, like when Mike got in trouble oh, on man. TikTok and the yeah. ex Mormon community went 
ham on him. I, this is what this is giving. Like, I feel like this is going to turn in. Is anybody on Exmo TikTok yeah. right now? Or and is the this going to turn into a thing? Yeah, old Exmo TikTok folks. And the whole, like, the nexus of the whole issue was everybody, <laughs> the person that everybody hates, Kwaku. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Like, that, that was, like, the trigger for it all. So what an intriguing discussion to walk in out in the middle of very confused and interested I yeah, mean, honestly, unfortunately so are you're we. gonna have to watch this from the beginning <laughs> because honestly, it is so are we. Yeah. some of this stuff this is also like right now this is also the kind of stuff that i like to talk about on live because if we made an edited video about it and we didn't even have the the, the gerardo perspective yeah it would <laughs> it, it would, would feel incomplete yeah and very attack attacking so, so also in the comments somebody had said i was shocked that mormon stories didn't have them as guests and john i assume john responded from the mormon stories account and said they have an open invitation to come on the podcast so i assume that yeah. john has reached out to them and for whatever reason they've decided not to and that's fair i mean if they're not trying to get excommunicated yeah it's hard to go on john's podcast and not get excommunicated yeah and so if you want to be uh if you want to be uh public and have a target officially painted on your back that's an easy way to do it exactly um dead air <laughs> yeah i'm looking Debbie was saying some stuff. John is always open to any opinions, but his wife is a great voice of reason. John's intention is not to ever harm anyone with a judgment. I know. And Gerardo has preconceived beliefs. It's complex podcasters. And I part know personally, John's number one supporter. So I know why. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I feel like the net positive of, of Mormon stories is, or the net change that, mormon stories podcast is a positive one i don't want to you know undermine the years and years and years of podcasts that and stories that john has helped put out there into the world because they are stories that have helped people like myself and many others yeah um so this is why it's we just it say takes nuance. away <laughs> yeah, it, yeah it it's a, a thing that's going to take away from people who might be on the verge of it um of leaving the church or you know whatever did you read the super chat yeah i love watching you process the situation in real time very nuanced intelligent discussion as always thank you will you check the monitor even really quick. with my where is it it's under your butt i'm pretty sure oh nice even with my outbursts of emotion you know John is trying to control that madness. Gerardo gets to shit. Be uh, be free to opinion. Yeah, I guess. I mean, he is his own individual person. Yeah. But it when you work for. Yeah, you could. I mean, <laughs> your job could be on the line for certain situations. Sure. I mean, it's just like anytime you work for a company and you do something that your company doesn't like. I mean, it and people will argue that it reflects back on the company. Yeah. And so I, you know, that's that's its own thing. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to question his decision. I'm going to question the method. Yeah. And I'm going to question the use of, you know, making a video about it maybe. But I mean, I don't know. There, There's a part of me that as the ex-Mormon and as a therapist who works with queer people who are in and out of the church and trying to process trauma and make sense of the space that would come across something like this and, you know, have a lot of emotions about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I... Like, I definitely intense. don't – I understand that this is um, – really hits close to home for Gerardo and stuff like that. And I, I don't fault him for that because I have anger. It's just about other things. Yeah. So I don't I don't fault him for that. And, you know, sometimes I, I can see in his situation where seeing this person being put, held up, put up on a pedestal, and having a voice within Mormonism seemingly – having a voice within Mormonism and having a lived experience that is the polar opposite of that would just be the fucking fire under my ass. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard. So, I mean, I'm not trying to like be a, a Gerardo hater or anything. If he ever ends up seeing this. Or no, we're not Gerardo haters. I mean, yeah. he, 
he made his decision. I just don't, I don't agree with it. I don't think he's a bad person by any means. Um, I don't know how to say this name, Evania, Evania. I don't know how to say that correctly, so don't hate me. Um, but they had said ultimately John is responsible for the dissemination of this info, and I mean I feel like that's fair. The yeah, the track, the platform, the method for which it got shared is MSP, and so unfortunately, even though like maybe it was Carter's decision, I mean yeah, he still disseminated the information, so it's still gonna, you know. If Gerardo People has that come for that kind of um, elevated place in within the the podcast, the company, then I think that's great. I think that everybody should be equal partners in that, um, especially if they're all working toward a common goal. But you know, I'm not sure that that's the case. Prairie Artemis, this is spot on. It's perfectly valid to be critical of people you approve of when they make questionable choices. Critical thinking, not blind faith. It doesn't diminish yeah. from them overall. That's, that's exact. That's exactly what sets us apart. That's what we're trying to do from from Mormonism, and that's exactly why I don't vibe with Mormonism because they are constantly out there saying, "Do not speak ill of the Lord's anointed. Do not speak out against." Um against the church leadership or their decisions that they have made just know that they have your best interest at heart and there's nothing to prove that that's the case um gay married couples can attend but you can't participate yeah and sometimes attending is even in question like you can be excommunicated and you can attend, attend. the church but that yeah. But you're not a member. You're, you're not allowed almost, to have callings. You can't take the sacrament. You can't participate. You can't, like, you can't do anything. They're not going to call on you. They're not going to include you. Like, the there is a stigma, yeah. a massive stigma with being excommunicated. And maybe these two have a really supportive board. And if they were excommunicated, they could yeah. still attend and they would be supportive. And that would be great. Yeah. But think about what that means to them. Like, they're like, I mean, Mormonism is like practically pushing you out the door. Like, no, you can sit on the sidewalk across the street. That's how you participate in the religion that you love. You sit over there. Yeah. Because that's Christ-like <clears throat> behavior yeah. now, isn't it? But most people don't get that opportunity because they get excommunicated. And why do you want to sit in a church building with people who have kicked your ass out the door and said you're not welcome here? Like, I hate the argument that sometimes people make. Well, if you're excommunicated, you can still attend. Like, it's like What's slapping the, the scarlet letter yeah. on your fucking head and saying, yeah, you can still come, you scum. <laughs> like... Yeah, you can still you can you don't get a ticket to come to the game, but you can watch the game from the overpass outside. Like, right, we still love you. Like, it, yeah, there's massive problems with welcome that. Welcome to do so. There's massive problems with that, and that's like a that's I think a part of this too is nobody wants that. Yeah, like nobody wants to be the hushed people in the back that are like, oh yeah, those guys are excommunicated. Guessing folks who have defended this have never been at it. It's not fun. Yeah. I mean, it is a dynamic here. It, yeah. It's it's not fair. It's not safe. It's, I mean, especially in the context of Utah and BYU, like a lot of times it is in a safe space to be outed. Like nobody wants to be outed, but the yeah. environment in Utah is especially yeah. dangerous, I feel like, for that. For that purpose. <clears throat> I mean, it's yeah. horrible all around, but I think Utah has created a specific environment that makes it more toxic. Yeah. So... It's it sucks that that happened. I'm not saying that that was a good thing. It also sucks that, I mean, it seems Gerardo ha is keen on more information than we have ever been. That Charlie has been using dishonest talking points to paint the church as better than it is, and I don't know, possibly getting some sort of perks from that. At the very least, he's privileged enough to be offered opportunities that other queer folks within mormonism or not no again we haven't watched the full like the episode because we haven't had the chance but there was some discussion saying that i from somebody in the comments that i think saying that mormon stories had outed charlie and his husband when they were dating while he was at byu which i think is partly linked to what gerardo has said in this comment um yeah he's saying let's see is that still up yeah He's saying Charlie had never asked it to remain a private matter. Charlie also publicly shares the fact that he is active in the church due to Charlie's history of 
calling me a liar in the past, even though I told the truth about his secret relationship while he was going around giving firesides about being gay and celibate. Yeah. <clears throat> so it sounds like that it's... is. The... Uh, we're, we're kind of the same way where we're like, it's not true. It's not, it's not real Mormonism, but about different things. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of icky. I mean, ethical. I don't know. <laughs> was consent involved in this? I don't know. Did is it illegal? No. Is the stalking? No. But is it just kind of icky? Yeah. <laughs> it's Yeah, and if what I What mean, a world we live in, honestly. Mommy of kittens, it looks like Gerardo is coming from a place of hurt. Like I could easily see that. That potentially might have influenced decision making, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've all been hurt by this organization and look what it's doing to us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's toxic. I mean, even for ex-Mormons, yeah. it's toxic. Yeah. Like the ex-Mormon community can be just as, I mean, I won't say just as bad as the church, but it can be, I mean, we all came from this organization. So I think I say all the time, we're all still very prone to engage in bad habits, like codependent habits that existed from things that we learned from the church um so there's something to be said for that in this space and we're all still learning and we're all still figuring it out yep ultimately the greatest at fault is the church and the people who are behind the church who are steamrolling the membership and taking innocent people and forcing problems into their heads that shouldn't be there. And especially with people who are not within the hetero norm, giving them extra baggage to carry for all their lives. And in some cases, taking the ones who are able to maintain upright and putting them on a pedestal and taking advantage of them and maybe even to a point where they're ending up lying because they have a good thing going for them, which a lot of us did. A lot of us lied to the bishop about things. Mm. And we still went to the temple and whatnot. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do we have anything else on this Well, one? and people are like, why does everybody keep talking about the fact that he was celibate? Because, it, I mean, to it Gerardo's is... point, he talks about, like, Charlie talks about it a lot. As if it's a noble thing. Yes. Which, if that's your decision, then I respect it, and yeah. you get that, and I love that for you. But it's not like if Gerardo, you... like, prying for information. Yeah. Charlie talks about how he waited for marriage and how, you know, like, all of this. So if that's actually not true... Yeah. I can see why for somebody who knew that that wasn't true, that would be really frustrating. <laughs> yeah. it, when he's using it as a topic, talking point, it's essentially being weaponized. Like, look, I this is how I've lived my life. I'm happy and you can do it too to influence people to essentially kind of shut that part out of their lives altogether. So. Well, and I mean... It Dave's saying, is it just me or does this seem like it's going to devolve into an influencer battle? I absolutely think it will. And here's the thing. Eventually. And here's my thought is I think I'm going to default to a few things. I'm going to default to I don't think anybody's intent in this situation was negative or ill-advised at all. I think Gerardo, as a gay man, as a person of color, looks at privilege in Mormonism through a different lens that many of us are not able to. Yeah. And sees things through a different way, and that's extremely valuable. And I think he also has some personal experiences that might have influenced how he feels about this. But he also is gay and a person of color and deserves to have a voice in this yeah. conversation. Totally. And I think he recognizes that they're, like... You know, if he was still a member and was gay, these are things that maybe he would have wanted that would have made it easier for him to stay. And he didn't get that opportunity because apparently only Charlie is getting that opportunity. Yeah. And so I can see why his intention is there, because if this is something that's helpful for gay members of the church, why aren't we just giving it to them? Yeah. If we're giving it to Charlie and it's helpful for him, then why don't we just give it to everybody else? Like, it's just that simple. And so I think that's where his intent is. I think execution got lost in the process. I don't. I don't endorse or support queer surveillance in any sense of the word. I don't agree with this decision. I don't overall think it was 
the greatest. Um, but I also think that we're weaponizing, like, the church is kind of defaulting to weaponizing Charlie and Ryan as the thing here to be targets yeah. instead of the actual institution itself that has put us all in this position. Yeah. You know, like we're only here because of what Mormonism has done. You can't talk about the chosen gaze within Mormonism that not everybody gets to be. Yes. Without, I mean, you, you kind of have to name them in, in some cases in, which is an awful position to be put in, but. Well, and it's, it's sketchy behavior. If we just like, if we remove like, you know, some of the aspects of it and look at it as, Mormonism is doing something that's inherently privileged for one person that's probably making them feel really good about their involvement yeah. in the church and making them want to stay. And I love that for them. But shit, why aren't we doing this for everyone else? And I don't buy that this is like a whole rollout thing to see how it goes. Because again, we're I not do rolling not out that. things with people. We don't do that with humans. So yeah. I don't buy into that at all. So where's and the... And they, they didn't roll out with the priesthood ban. No. They came out in general conference and said, it's over. You're all getting ordained. And I'm not saying that that is a good thing, but that's how they've done it in the past. Yeah. And if they want to go through with this, the next great leap in um, in social justice, then that's the way that they're going to have to do it. And I think if we remove like the Gerardo and the Charlie aspects of this, if we saw this happening just on like a really high level, I think we would look at this and be like, if you're doing this shit, say it with your whole motherfucking chest. Like if you're yeah. going to do this for gay people in the church, which I love for gay people who want this in the church, yeah. then fucking do it all the way. Like, don't just do it with one person because yeah. now you have all these other people who are feeling even worse about like, well, I must not be like, like, I can just see from a therapist's perspective, like, scrupulosity for these gay members kicking into an insane degree. Like, what am I not doing? What am I not doing as a gay member that I'm not getting that right? And he is. Yeah. And so I can see just on a very high fundamental level why this is an issue where we would all look at this and go, oh, absolutely not. This is not okay. Like, if we were to pull back from the drama and the context and how this came about, which wasn't great. Like, if we pull back from all that, like, just on its face, it's an issue. <clears throat> Citrine, they do not distinguish between civil union and sealing when it comes to um, non-heterosexual marriage. They don't recognize any of that, and sealing is not even available. Uh, but yes, there is di there is distinction uh, because civil union is essentially nothing to them. We do kind of know even that though. Charlie and Ryan aren't celibate because they he talks about how they waited for marriage. Like, he waited for marriage. Yeah. The thing that you're waiting to do is have sex, right? So it kind of thus implies that you waited to have sex until you were married. So that's where that's coming from. What's, so, who's this person that's a troll? Am I not seeing them? Oh, are we talking about Kara? <laughs> anyway, can someone block the spammer? What, who am I not singing? Sorry. So, yeah, I, I think uh, it would be a really lackluster win if Charlie were doing this and moving the needle and he has to lie to do it. I don't know. Jordan said that he is kind of in the, the space where he's liking likening it to Eve, where Eve had to break the commandments in order to um, put the fall of Adam into motion and thus the... Um, the entire um, plan of God or whatever um, but I don't know do I need to look at the discord no they're, um, I think we just have some people with fired up opinions um and I think people are misunderstanding each other. Okay. That might be, if Sage got them, that might be why I'm seeing it. Mods, if you need a break, take a break. Um, yeah, I didn't even see. So, if I see anything else, I'll just delete it at this point. But, I think that's, there's so much nuance to be had here. And I think that's the point um, that we have to make is this is not like a, a singular like look through our glasses on one thing issue like there's so much to this and I think we really have to be critical about what we're seeing what we're hearing where we're getting it from 
and big picture what this means because big picture for me I'm like if this is working well for Charlie and Ryan and it's making them feel validated as gay members and feel like they have a spot within the church and the church is okay with doing it for them there is absolutely no excuse for them to not be doing it for everyone else there is no excuse yeah and so period point blank so that just stands as it is how we got that information not great does it give some people uncomfortable vibes and I wouldn't want somebody coming to see if I'm taking the sacrament? Yes, totally. Absolutely. But we're also, it sounds like there's some personal things here going on potentially. So am I worried that these two are going to be excommunicated shortly? Yes. Yeah. That essentially is. I, because kind again, of the unstoppable force. <laughs> um, Again. Like, but that being said, I don't think. I think this will, will speed it up. I don't think that this would. I don't think that this is going to essentially change the end game. <laughs> I don't think it will change the end game, but it sped the process up. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. And again, like many of you are saying in the comments, like multiple truths here. Yeah. Valid perspectives, big feelings. I, I think we need to, we criticize the people that we look to look up to yeah. and, you know, and we also want to understand where they're coming from. If people make valid criticisms about us and the things that we're saying right now, don't blindly, don't blindly defend us if they make a good point. If you agree with us, yeah. then great. Go for like it. Like we said, we are all free. We are free to make up our own opinions, draw our own conclusions. We are not telling you that you cannot draw xyz conclusion because that is not the same conclusion as us because that would be totally against everything that i believe yeah and so i think that's what i encourage you to do is just be wary of the information that you get and the people that you get it from and yeah i don't think anybody in this situation has bad intentions i don't think anybody in this scenario are bad people i think we're all just trying to do what we feel is best for each other and we screw up an execution and it happens all the time yeah and so Definitely. we just got to own it. I think this might potentially create some influencer issues. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Are they if... popular in the church with the LDS? Be... Essentially outside of Utah, probably nobody knows who they are. Probably not. Like if you're not like in the Mormon community yeah. and like follow Mormon influencers. Or you're like a big don't. BYU fan, which most BYU fans are or alums are in Utah. So yeah, it doesn't really. So I like, that's why we wanted to talk about this. And I knew this was going to take a long time because this is a very nuanced discussion. There's lots of feelings here. Your feelings, whatever they are, whether you're queer or not, are valid as you process this. Try to think about if you are not queer, try to center queer perspectives as you think about this because they are the people yeah. who are being impacted the most. And so, you know. Whether... Yeah, I, I mean, we, we came up with Gerardo's point of view we also came up with uh what was their name again i can't Kate. remember kate's point of view as well so and those are two very vastly differing points of view from both queer people yeah so it's yeah <laughs> so there you go i think i think this was a good nuanced conversation that gave room yeah for lots of things i don't think we Again, we didn't watch the podcast. I don't know that I really want to, to be honest. Um, this isn't a we hate anybody thing. I'm not a Gerardo hater. I'm not a Kara hater. Like, we're all, I would say we're. I'm a rusty hater. We're through friends and through. of the show, if we use the H3 verbiage, right? Through and through. So, I yeah. think we all know who the real enemy here is from the ex-Mormon perspective, which is Mormonism. And I yeah. think. For a lot of queer people, it's Mormonism, even though they don't want it to be, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, Mormonism has made itself it is public enemy number one. Mormon's so. fault. And even if we get rid of Rusty, there's still Dallin. Yep. And then there's Who still Holland. Prob probably worse. And there's I, still Bednar. I, I am definitely would be holding my breath for we are not escaping Holland it. biting the dust. That man absolutely... Like, it's not a Rusty issue. I know some people think that if Rusty bites the dust, then maybe things yeah. will change. It will not. Rusty is not the thing that's, like, it's keeping part the it. homophobia. It is all of them. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Anyway, 
let's get off of that topic. My keyboard died, so if we need to do anything, uh, I hope we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't control anything from over here. Um, but let's go on to the next one. This one is pretty quick. We'll just go through this real fast. It's in the title. I guess the next two things are both in the title. Damn it, I need to charge this because... I need to zoom in. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Hold on. There we go. We got to do it the old-fashioned way, baby. No shortcuts. All right, so here is... If you're not aware, I, you're on YouTube right now. You, I would assume that you're aware, but if you're not aware, um, there is a public figure on YouTube. goes by the username Mr. Beast. His name is Jimmy something. I don't know. He does kind of like a variety of things, but generally speaking, what Mr. Beast is doing it, in any given video is giving away money. Um, he's done that in different ways. I've seen videos of him like calling, ordering a pizza, and then like buying a house and furnishing it for the guy who delivers the pizza or something like that. I've also seen them doing it in ways where, like, they did the Squid Game thing or whatever. I think that was for charity. Correct me if I'm wrong in the, the chat. Um, but anyway, uh, this is Mr. Beast Philanthropy, um, which is another channel that he set up where they... Mr. Beast is not Mormon. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Sorry. Um, I don't know. What, what does it say here? 100% profits from my ad revenue, merch sales, and sponsorships will go toward making the world a better place. Which, lovely. Lovely. 100% revenue, you never see that. Yeah. Do I, I can give credit where credit's due. Do I have criticisms of Mr. Beast? Certainly. Some of, sometimes he does things that the optics are not great in, in all of the, the circumstances. And I hate that we live in a world where we have to look up to people like Mr. Beast for just helping people get by rather than the organizations that have full monetary opportunity to just go ahead and do that. Roman Atwood is a helicopter Mormon. Eek. Roman Atwood's got crazy. He's money. kind of a weird guy. Uh, anyway, but this was posted. Um, I saw it on the r slash X Mormon subreddit. Um, Speaking of, this is the community uh, community post. We often asked, how can we help? Our response is usually to be kind, help others, and to support one another. No act of kindness goes unnoticed. No small act of kindness goes unnoticed in the world. And everyone is watching you. Liking and subscribing to our channel is already directly supporting to our cause and pushing this kind, kindness movement forward, which I'm inclined to believe because he said 100% of all the ad, ad revenue goes to that. Interactions he wrote it turn down. into ad revenue. So believe it. Love it. However... We now have to find or have another way in which you can make an impact and not only help beast philanthropy, but also help yourself. We've recently partnered with Just Serve, an app that helps match volunteers with the right organization by registering all of your interests. And when you can be available, the app will then offer a list of opportunities to best suit you. We believe that uh, volunteering and helping other people is one of the greatest things that you can do, not only for yourself, but f uh, not only for others, but for yourself. There is nothing in the world that feels as great as being able to help somebody else. Just uh, by registering with this link, uh, www.justserve.org slash beast philanthropy, oh. you will be helping fill our beast philanthropy food pantries. So head over and download the app today. We promise you won't regret it. So What's up? I was looking back at the person, the Latter-day Les person. I assumed that they were part of the Latter-day Les group just because I'm reading really fast on my phone. They're actually not. They have a different podcast. Oh. So I want to drop it on here real quick. Um, their podcast is called Called to Queer. And... Um, they have their own Instagram. It's called Called to Queer. And then her Instagram is Latter-day Les. Um, I read my phone their too fast. Instagram. So I apologize. Their Instagram. So go follow them. Go follow their podcast. Um, clearly, they have good perspective on this issue in particular and probably others. And so um, I'm retracting my statement. They're not part of the... We are correcting the record. Sorry about that. We are correcting the record. Um, 
I saw Latter Day Lesbian. Latter Day Les, yeah, our brain automatically Latter Day Lesbian. Goes, <laughs> yeah. To that podcast. So different podcast called to Queer. I'll link it in the description. Yep. So anyway, Beast Philanthropy, teaming up with JustServe.org. Um, but if you go to the the website, you see they have a nice little integration here. I won't go to the projects. That's kind of the main focus of the thing because um, it will pull up projects in our area. If you would like to see what that's about, you can go and do it on your own time. I'm not trying to advertise where we live or anything like that. Um, but if you go down here, obviously, Just Serve is provided as a service by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah, there it is. And Intellectual Reserve, Inc., all rights reserved. So I am not... I don't know what the details are with this agreement. Um, in the post, we can go back real quick. Ah, in the post, it said that um, just by registering at this link, you will be helping fill our beast philanthropy food pantries. As uh, so, head over and download the app today. So I don't know what kind of agreement they have struck because it sounds to me like there is some sort of um like donation matching or something going on there in essence what i i think what just serve is doing because when you go on there it's like volunteering at your local aspca or you know like soup kitchens or th things like that it helps get the word out that there's a need for x y or z help in certain places that are helping you know those kinds of organizations um and i think what mr beast and beast philanthropy is doing generally i think is is a positive for the people that it is it's a shame that they can't help everyone at the same time obviously i would wish that people didn't need to be helped obviously um but there's I don't know. It's it just is weird that they kind of enter into like a partnership like this. And I'm always skeptical with things like just serve or whatever, because these are tools that the church uses to paint themselves as just the ordinary Christians that you'll find anywhere else. It's what they're using to be able to because you look at their um, hold on their advisory board. I was looking at this before we went live because you go up to about us. You can only find the mention of the church down here at the very bottom. If you scroll all the way down, but if you go into about us, nothing just serve dot org is a website where volunteers uh, needs of organization are posted and volunteers search for opportunities to enhance the quality of life in the community. Just serve is a free service that links community volunteers with volunteer, uh, with volunteer, wait, community volunteer needs with volunteers and does not discriminate based on race, religion, gender, ethnicity, or sexual orientation in posting projects or in encouraging volunteers to serve according to our guidelines. I feel like that little part right there, it you don't get a pat on the back for doing the bare minimum, but I'm also a little skeptical. The sexual orientation one, I it could be that things are getting filtered out. But you don't see anything about Mormonism in here. Maybe in their videos you might see stuff. No information that it is from the Mormon church. And you look at their advisory council and you see organizations like VP of Amer American Red Cross, Catholic Relief Services, Post News Group, America's Services Commission. There's one little, oh, Sharon Eubank. I didn't see that earlier. That's pretty obvious. She was in our ward. Yep, she was. Um, humanitarian Division Director at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She's Rotary International. Salvation Army. Salvation Army. You know, Isra Aid. I don't know what that is, but... It kind of paints this picture that the, the church is really widely accepted a across all kinds of faiths and everything like that, but it's... It's one of those tools that they use to look normal. Oh, it's just service or whatever. Astrid Burke, welcome yeah. to the terrestrial kingdom. And I did read, I was concerned. I was like, oh, well, you're just going in here and you're giving 
your information to them, why would they not just use that at as a way to send missionaries to your house or things? And so far as I'm not very good at reading terms of use or anything, it doesn't seem like they're using it to harvest data, which would be my big, big issue. Um, they say that your data is, you know, it's can be you can ask to remove it. it it's not belonging to them at any time but they also have the right to deny your removal or whatever for any reason that they deem uh acceptable like some sort of liability issue or or things like that so i don't know it's weird if we had the same situation and you know, it seems innocuous or whatever, but if we had the same situation and we knew that Scientology was doing this, we would we would feel weird. Like yeah. universally, I feel like we would feel weird about it. And so I don't think I don't give the Mormon Church a pass at this. And it's another way for them to break into the mainstream. Like, can you imagine these young kids? And they're like, "Oh, Mr. Beast is doing this beast philanthropy or whatever," and he's teaming up with this. Thing just serve and oh my god when this first came out the the church was so they were drilling us on it they were like oh sign up for just serve and go do stuff like that so they, they could get members alongside with secular people and you can be like oh yeah isn't this such a great service opportunity i do this this is my church or whatever and so vis-a-vis -vis, these kids are seeing oh mr beast has teamed up with this oh and it's also put on by the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints oh, you know what? I feel like I have religion missing from my life and that's something that I would want. Maybe I should check this out. And then they start the whole whitewashed version of Mormonism to get these people interested in and get their foot in the door and inevitably extract capital from them via tithing well, and, I did know this on and on and on. Only because of... I think I ran into it on here, the H3 sub or on the podcast, but um, Mr. Beast has a, like a, um, one of his team members is trans. Oh, I totally forgot about, yeah, Chris. And that's what Miku was dropping that in the chat, but I remember watching about, um, watching that somewhere. I can't remember if it was H3 or not. Cause I think it was, about he was getting Chris? hate on X for, on oh, Twitter everywhere. For defending, yeah. This team member, if I recall. For yeah. I I would see it out in the wild. Chris, yes. Okay. There you yeah. go. Yeah. I remember now. I'm piecing together. Yeah. And yeah, I it was crazy the amount of vitriol that that he was getting for that. And like she's just what the fuck did she do? Like crazy. But I I was happy, like any sort of criticism i have aside was happy to see that he's stood by her and regardless of the backlash or whatever i mean he's big enough that it doesn't it doesn't really matter um but i i would wonder what he thought of that if if he truly does know what the church uh teaches and and how they view trans folks and things like that he so. probably doesn't know Probably not, and most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we talk about it. So that, yeah, that's don't. why we think it's important that these people, that people are aware exactly of what it is. Because I would never join an organization that is like vehemently against my friends. <laughs> no, and I, and we're not out here being Mr. Beast haters. It's like seriously, this is information, and like please do something with it yeah. because this does not clearly align with your values. And so maybe reconsider yeah. it. It's hard because I know that these are business decisions. Yeah. The, the goal of this channel and this organization that he's created is to help people. And you know, when you, you're just trying to help people when there's an opportunity that arises, that is good. And there is a lot of good stuff about this. I'm, I'm not hating on that aspect of it but it just opens the door for that other organization um to receive praise accolades and um to look good in the public eye yeah and i don't think that the mormon church does that deserves that you know so 
J- Jimmy hasn't always been the most through and through at vetting potential business partners. Yeah, and I mean it's tough. It also you have been to a know team member decision. Yeah, it, maybe he just gave the okay. You have to. There's a lot of lore to know yeah. to be able to make that kind of call that the Mormon Church and associations with the Mormon Church are not good. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's why we like pointing things out like this because while the church is very like overt and obvious about some things, they are also very sneaky and other things. Yep. So if Super it's sneaky. like you know Yeah, it's it's the same thing with um the same reason why we hate on the 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 giving machines that they do, mm-hmm. like the one that they did in in uh Times Square. Times Square, they made a whole spectacle out of it. And they're like, yes, come and help people who are in um, poor developing nations with a little bit of something this year or whatever. And the optics of that are good, but the essentially it is to drive baptisms to get people to accept Mormonism as a force for good. And yeah. inevitably the money that they gain from that kind of stuff they're pumping back into it's just pr buying up property and in some cases lobbying and um come buy someone a chicken and feel better about yourself i know that's like cat that's perfect yeah yeah so anyway there's that i thought that was silly (sighs) just a bunch of silly geese and then the other thing that we had. Sheesh, we've been going a while. We haven't even gotten to all this stuff. I know, we haven't even touched on Timmy yet. Boom. Here's a headline for y'all since we were talking about him so much last year. This should be surprising to no one. It should not be as surprising to anybody. But it is funny. It's funny to see that the reactionaries never change. They are... If anything, they are consistent. And for that, I congratulate them. But to have this guy who is facing accusations of sexual assault and then having him be a keynote speaker at CPAC is just like par for the course at this point. It's comical. It tells you everything that you need to know about the kind of people that attend that kind of or support those kinds of politicians and people that go to those conferences. Um, did we want to read some of these text messages? Because there were uh, there was more information that came out from that lawsuit. There's so many of that them. That was just it comical, honestly. Um, <laughs> you not off brand John Cena. What is he doing here? Is yeah, he that's a bonus a for a CPAC event? speaker. That's the real thing. Like this, these are the kinds of people they look for. Oh yeah, that is like, oh, we could get Tim Ballard. Oh, and he has a, a lawsuit against him for SA. That's fucking. That's even better. So yeah, he's supposed to be see- speaking at CPAC. I don't think anything in this article was really uh, new, but we did have this stuff. This is from the JJ versus Tim Ballard lawsuit. These are a bunch of screenshots screenshots of text messages between him and the, uh, not the defendant, the it's prosecutor. Prose- but in a civil suit, it's not prosecutor, is it? I don't know. I don't know. From JJ. I didn't go to law school. We didn't go to law school, if you've not noticed. Go just watch that some of these are hilarious, just cringe, awful shit. Let me see if I can zoom in real quick. Sorry about my keyboard. I didn't know that it was going to die. Now I'm too far. We'll read it so everybody can hear. I was going to say do one more because I still can't read that very well. Ah, what? Zoom in. Did I hit actual size on accident? I don't know. (laughs) Zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, there we go. You read that, right? Um, yeah. Plaintiff. Thank you. Plaintiff, there you go. Um, Can we get this? Oh, there we go. Okay, so some of these are nothing. Scroll down. Nothing burgers. Okay, oh, well, so he doesn't. 
laughed at an image. Okay, so just to establish, a... like, if we're going to get into it, there's a whole string of things. There's 38 of these. We don't have to read every one of them, though, right? They all kind of go together. They all kind of go together. Oh. Do we want to get into these? It, like, it kind of tells a story from kind of beginning to end. All right. Do you think we can power through them? What do we let? Can we do a poll? Do we want to go through these? Did you see the lawsuit filed against the fake wrestling federation? Holy snow. Okay. What? <laughs> Let's start a poll. I'm doing it. Oh, you're doing it? Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, I can't type, so you have to do it. <laughs> some of these are so wild. There's some wild that. shit in here. I don't want to influence anybody's answers. Jordan's putting the poll up. Okay, your poll is up. We like to be democratic around here. Read the text or save for next stream. Oh, we're starting strong on the read the text. I don't want to keep anybody up too late tonight, so. Tim Ballard is the was the former CEO and founder of Operation Underground Railroad, which was the um, stop sex trafficking organization, basically, that all the Mormons Supposedly. are obsessed with. Because Tim is Mormon, but then was allegedly excommunicated for some sketchy behavior, which is now coming out in this lawsuit, um, which includes, like, kind of trafficking women um yeah. ironically so really less than cute stuff all right it looks like everybody's on board with with going through with this okay look we've got cat we've got baloney we've got baloney here do we get a let's get a close-up of baloney real quick you look at the your camera? presence is necessary look, look at the camera look up here <laughs> you want did you just need something to hold oh We'll hold my arm. You look over there. Look over there. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. <laughs> He's like, put me down. Yeah, that'll be the last time you walk across my lap. <laughs> okay, so I need like a something. Like a something? Through. Like a something. I don't know what that means. Can you get me a Capri Sun? <laughs> I could pre Let's just do it. I don't want to get up, and I don't think it'll be that long. Oh, my God. Right? You severely underestimate. Oh, my God. Um, Let's see. <sighs> Maybe you can read this side, and I'll read this side. How's that sound? I can't read the white and blue. Okay, maybe I'll read that side. It's too far. You can read this? Yes. I'll read no, this No, I side. can't really read that either. Zoom in like one more time. I'm, I don't want to go and get a Capri Sun. <laughs> Give me a chance to not get a Capri Sun. Okay, that's fine. Is this good? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Positive? Yes. Okay. So, replay crew, if you don't watch, this will just come back to the end of the podcast. I'll have hopefully time stamped it so you can come back and watch it. Okay, so conversation between tim ballard and one of his people who he was going to take on the um like on an op. operation things yeah. that he does in other countries where he's allegedly preventing children or taking children out of trafficking right so this is one of the women that he invited with him to go and so these are the conversations that the two of them are having back and forth so it's unhinged because tim is unhinged so she texts him this is dating back to what is this Ma or january of 23 last year. yeah yeah so a year ago these aren't that old so she texts him something that i can't read give me a few more minutes and he says who the hell are you i dialed the wrong number and wanted to call back weird i roll emoji you must be pretty lonely wanting to talk to strangers. And then he sends an image that we don't get to see. And then the shrug emoji laughed at an image. Joe, well, JJ is either married or in a relationship with someone. Just FYI, as we go through these. Well, that's inappropriate for a stranger to send. 
do you have to go? So those first messages, in my opinion, are Tim trying to play it cool, thinking that somebody else picked up her phone and was saying, oh, just dialed the wrong number. Yeah. Who the hell are you? And that will will revisit. Or do you want me to text you here? I'm ready anytime. You good? Let's do all comms here. This is here. like two, two days after. All comms here. So he's wanting to do all their communication on this phone. Yeah, I just got off the phone with Blank and told him he's good. Great. Are you good? Very. Don't worry about me. I'm just praying for you and your meetings today. Cringe. I always tell period undercover operators this that it is never too late to pull out of an op or something if something doesn't feel right. Even seconds before beginning either trainings or real ops never feel pressured to pull the plug on it. To not to not the plug on it. His typing is awful. sentence structure is atrocious. I cannot even read half the shit he says, and I've read through all these. I promise. Maybe if you have a second this week, though, you could text blank and just reassure him. I'm assuming that's their partner. And assure, reassure him you will take care of me. I told him about the inspiration I have gotten so he understands and is on board, but I feel like it would be helpful to hear it from you. I'm assuming that she's talking about spiritual inspiration here. Mm -hmm. Smiley face emoji. And then later, I just realized you called this morning. Sorry. Wait, did you say you did already talk to Celeste and you have to tell me when Osborne knows too? Also, if you'd rather, I can just talk to Celeste when you can be there too. I'm totally fine with that. And then that night, that was fun. Smiley face. He says, wait, what was fun? What happened? I went shopping. Oh, yay. Show me. Really? No one else is anywhere near you? Not at all. Okay, haha. Ha, I'll, I'll give you a preview, but not on. So I'm assuming this is unmentionables that uh -huh. she went shopping for. Uh -huh. But also, Idaho Falls is a small town of mostly Mormons, so there wasn't a huge selection. There's no uh, Victoria's Secret as far as I know in Idaho Falls. Nope. Um, okay, so then he laughs at that message and replies, it's better off anyway, right? Tim's married, <laughs> remember, everyone, and has many, many children, young children. If you'd rather send pick with them off, okay. Then she sends an image we can't see, don't know what it was. And she laughs at the message. Kids coming. Kids coming in, gotta help them in bed. Like, bro. Then I'll get back on. Yeah. You know what I mean. Let me I cheat roll. on my wife later. I got to put my kids to bed first. Yeah. Let me cheat on my wife in the name of uh, saving kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Kids went fast alone again. Okay. Are you sure? They don't look super appealing laying on the carpet, but I guess it's that or nothing right now. I can't believe I'm sending you this. Then he sends an image or he sends a an image. Or a gif. Oh, yeah. yeah it's Look probably a reaction gif. Look at you. Going to be fun with some kind of emoji I can't see. I literally, this is literally a conversation that you and I would have had like six years ago. No, this is even worse than that. This is like this high is school worse, conversation. But I didn't have that. So <laughs> I had no riz in high school. I don't know what that's like. This is no riz. <clears throat> Let's see. And then she says, now I have to find an amazing play, uh, amazing hiding place for all of this. And he emphasized the image or the, of uh, the message. I got some clothes to barely clothes. Haha. -ha. Part of UC work, which undercover work is finding lots of hiding places, but they aren't as fun. And she laughed at that message. I'm learning so much. Okay. So I'm going to, bleep out some of this personally because i can't read some of this for tos i've been talking to bernie all day he's excited to prepare a huge blank party in the spring for my boss who is funding it after i told him about bernie he is sending me back to get details booked and kids hand chosen and he is sending his daughter with who i happen to be fucking anyway so it's perfect boss daddy is an older sick P word and his daughter, did I mention Brian is effing her, helps coordinate these parties and she knows exactly what daddy likes. Brian and this girl are kinky sex tourists but do not want any sex 
with blank, but we get paid a lot to help daddy and his friends. Got it. And get used to Brian saying fuck all the time and every other word as well. Okay, so Brian is his alter ego. <laughs> okay, Brian is his... Um, his persona. His persona when he goes undercover. Okay, so he's actually talking about himself. And she says, got it. Sounds super fun. And okay, laughing emoji. Also, just this is the most, so far as I know, and obviously this is not like a subject that I've closely followed, but this is the only notorious guy that I knew in the child rescuing business. Uh, this does not really speak to the level of professionality that I would uh, expect Absolutely from an not. operation like that. Texts like this over iMessage, like it should be, it, it is clear as day that this is just, and it just gets worse. A joke to him. So then he says, Bernie, who I assume is one of the people involved in the op, is going to take us to all the gross blank houses to see and pick the girls. And we will get to know his head recruiter slash escort really well. Did I say I'm learning so much? I think I mean I am trying to unlearn so much. The irony of this is insane. And then he emphasizes that. And she says, I mean, I knew what you guys do. I know what you got or knew what you guys do, but I don't know if I ever really processed it. And then he says, Brian and blank have to reach such extreme chemistry together beforehand in order to be able to be convincing in the, is that vomitousness? Yeah. Of the gross blank world. So I think she's playing the part of Lizzie, if I understand correctly. Yeah, that's what I'm gathering so he's talking about how him and her need to have like great chemistry because they're talking about what they're going to be doing on their underground on their like undercover op together and then he says part of Hyde Park stuff tantric creates heavenly light and protection what you should study up on true tantric and then he replies to one of her messages saying like um, somebody said, welcome to the real O-U-R. <laughs> that's crazy. Apparently he's lied to himself enough to believe that's exactly what it is. Uh, and then she emphasized that last message. Seriously, am I going to be able to get good at all of this in just two days? Yes, with a bunch of exclamation points. If we can feel it with each other, then Yes. And then she loved that message and he says, it's not about learning some strange kinky moves. That's not it at all. I didn't have any to teach anyway. It's just about making it real and tapping into tantric light. I think you will be surprised how fast we connect. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm starting to worry, uh, but it's pointless. LOL. I trust you. It will feel new, but at the same time, not new. Uh, she loved that uh, because of past lives stuff. Winky face. Winky face. He emphasized that. Oh, okay. I only have one request. Okay. We all get chocolate shakes at the airport when it's all over. Ha ha. Okay, done. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Yes, I thought you were going to forbid the touching of some body part. LOL. It's not my body, remember? In that case, you should request I do stuff you like to you. You need to tell me what that is. Not here. Content emoji. Maybe on the airplane if no one else can hear. And then he sends Bro. fire water emoji that's usually used for inappropriate things. Nobody will hear. On another note, I want to hear the Eliza story one day too. Okay, I will tell you. And then she loved that. Nobody will hear. Also, not that anyone would do a forensic exam of your laptop, but if they did, these texts will be there for many years. Computers have crazy cached memory, just FYI. Like if something that they blacked out took it to a forensic analyst, even in like five years, he would have them all in a day. I was dying when I read this because the irony, because we're reading this on stream right now. Right now. (laughs) This is hilarious. Also, there are things you could do. All you have to... As far as I know, just overwriting a lot of this stuff will take care of it. There are, you could take it to it. 
this dude is part of an organization that's supposed to be doing undercover work. I think you would take it to a an, an forensic analyst to be able to make that not the case, but whatever. I'll just trust God on that one. Well, not that worried. Maybe you should have been. Just letting you know these yeah, texts buddy. are getting hot, which I'm glad. Why does he type like this? He types like he can't. He does read. type like a teenager, honestly. It's part of the tactic. Uh, in any other context, I would be a lot more worried. I know. And then she loved, which yeah. I'm glad. Look on you, mother effers. He says it in five years. Fuck you all with your judgy bitch ass bullshit. We are getting into role to save kids, bitches. So again, I say F you too much question mark. It's giving Facebook <laughs> uncle comments. <laughs> it's giving and my then, parents don't allow me to swear, but I do swear I around know. my friends. <laughs> uh, all the raffle emojis. That was perfect. He laughs. Ha ha. I was talking out loud as I texted. That's so much worse. This is so bad. But honestly, sometimes I want to tell Nikki some of it like that one and then I remember I can never ever tell her anything. So someday in heaven, she's going to watch the the video to just for the laugh. Then he completely ignores everything she just said and said, "Glad we will see each other Wednesday will be helpful." Just tell me when. Come down toy daddle office. Toy daddle office. <laughs> That's where Get out of my off five. <laughs> That's middle where... schoolers on Wattpad. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's where Matt and I will be having meetings. Okay, gotta go to bed. Me too. Talk to you tomorrow. Praying hands and then he sends a gif reaction. Oh, this is the following day, it looks like. Gotta control thoughts. Have you played out scenarios in your mind? Otherwise known as fantasizing. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I'll play some out now. Good night. Oh, this was the right before. Sorry, I know it's early. My brain is just on overdrive. It's a good thing. Uh, but I kept thinking about some questions you asked me last night, and it threw me some curveballs. I'm learning things about myself the past couple of days that I need to work through and tell you just about uh, – tell you about in person probably though uh can i have you for maybe an hour tomorrow after we go to savannah's yes of course what questions did i ask i can't even remember are you having second thoughts about the op hmm he might have been inebriated if you can't even remember yeah or he can't even think to scroll up dumbass yeah right well, no. they delete everything, I bet. Oh, but it stays on the laptop? Dumb. Seriously. If you just got here, we're reading I don't blame this person, but... Tim Ballard, the founder and former CEO of Operation Underground Railroad, and one of the people that he took on in Operation. Yep, that is now suing him. No, not at all. You asked what makes me feel sexy. What do I like? I think... Uh, I think about scenarios and it all just opened up a ton of, I don't know, something I didn't know, know needed to be opened up. I promise it's not bad. It's just the result of my history and experiences. It's not to make any sense. It's not going to make any sense to you unless I just tell you everything. Just things about my marriage is plural and now it's affected me. Plural meaning both the first and the second one, not plural marriage, lol. And this is the most middle school and high school thing I've ever seen. She sends a paragraph about something really vulnerable and intimate. And he responds, ha, 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 got it. Ha, 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 got it. <laughs> That's it. Let's talk Wednesday. That's it. And then are you having, and then he completely ignores everything she says and goes back to, are you having problems coming up he, with scenarios? Not just coming back to it. He goes and replies to the message from last night. Yes. About that. I'm not. They happen all all night awake or asleep and she loved that no i was awake uh most of the night because of that and i found the flushing emoji the blushing emoji i want to hear about it everything you've told me about when the ladies are texting that is almost certainly a lie <laughs> the, <laughs> i was i was awake most of the night because of that no anyway did you read that already? Yeah. Okay. I am realizing I also have some significant insecurities from some things that I actually feel like might 
heal, but I just need to need you to know about it. You found the blushing emoji? Just that was his response to that. Completely ignores he that. He's so obtuse. Uh, did the insecurities oh, emerge? Oh, did the insecurities emerge during the scenarios? But still, that was the first thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, maybe forego that stupid response. Not directly, just more thinking about what I like and makes me feel sexy. It's too complicated to text. Then there's an image that gets stored. It's a PNG. So an actual photo. It could just be another reaction thing. Maybe. My day is pretty open. Christy, me, and Matt O at 10 to 11. Online lecture 2 to 3. Salt Lake City meeting 3.30 to 5. You can fill in all the windows. Not sure what obligations you have. You don't know what you like? Question mark. Study Tantra and Chakras. Which, let me tell you, Tantra and Chakras? Chakras got some conflicts with Mormonism. Let me tell you that. Tantra could maybe be argued. Yeah. I, I chakras. Think, I think in the, uh, the handbook, they advise against it or they warn against it. My day is pretty open too. Just going tanning and getting uh, waxed at ten thirty. I think that's a winky face. Lots of healing from all this. Hey to Park. I started reading about it around four thirty this morning. Huh. Again, come to Dowdle Office, American Covenant Office after in Linden. I can't today. Root chakra. <laughs> I'm in Idaho. <laughs> Oh, is this your schedule tomorrow? Never mind, it is. I got confused. And then love the Starting root my meditation, going to include you in it. Pray. And then she loved that. And then replied to his schedule. I'm busy tomorrow until about 1230, but I could come to the office after that. Matt told me he's planning on meeting with you until 2, probably for the Simon PD call that that's on hold after or on your calendar so i'm meeting with him once you're done is after five okay i don't know if it will work between the other meetings be but we could go deliver savannah's thing at five and then talk sounds good i'll plan for after five i'll be finishing in salt lake at five and then she loved that i read about root chakra i feel like my root chakra is pretty well balanced the insecurities i have stem from a specific thing called uh p-o-r-n i don't know i don't want to get effed up by the t-o-s uh which is funny because i have literally never seen it but it's still managed to screw with plenty of things in my life i was so it was so relieving and comforting to hear you say that you never look at it. <laughs> cap. Fucking <laughs> s stop the cap okay, immediately. Jimmy. I don't think, uh, I didn't think you did that anyway, but to hear that you, uh, you say it is almost overwhelming in the best way. I didn't know how much it has attached, uh, affected me. I have never talked about this to anyone, like literally no one. P-O-R-N is a bitch. Don't look at it. And she laughed. Tell me about it. I told you how I have a hard time being convincing with even super hot SWs. Or in another sense, I don't have a, quotes hard time with them. Because that's P-O-R-N and my brain won't allow me to engage it. And then he says, I'm a demisexual. <laughs> Which. I'm not laughing at the demisexual <clears throat> part. That's you know. valid. But like to just randomly throw that in it, there. It's giving he learned a word and he's just trying to sprinkle it into the conversation. Oh, my God. How are you? How are you? This is literally the same day. So this was in the morning, right? This is at 530. I quit. about just messing with you. Don't quit. Don't quit. What thoughts, I think he's trying to say, have you been having a blot all this? Hmm. Well, if you really want to know, I did almost quit today when I went to get that Brazilian wax. I've only done a Braz uh, bikini wax before. This was way worse. She said it's because I'm on my period. Sorry, TMI. So everything is more sensitive. You So you owe me. I don't know what you owe me, but something amazing. Brazilians are painful as hell, <clears throat> so can validate that. Wow. You never did Brazilian before? For the record, I didn't tell you to. Well, you still owe me. Just saying that pretty much 100% of S tourists roll <clears throat> like that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like homie has a preference and he's just trying to make an excuse. Yep. 
And no, I have a low pain tolerance. I just shave. And then, well, I've never seen one of those before. Shrug emoji. Do you usually shave everything? Like even is the bald look new? Sorry, there are no secrets anymore. <laughs> this is, are Mormons allowed to be demisexual? I think they're required to be demisexual. <laughs> but not out of like, that's their sexuality. Oh my God. Ara, thank you for the super chat. <clears throat> LOL, it's almost the same, obviously. And then I think that's like the nerdy emoji. I can't Why tell almost? Blurry. Because it's not completely bald, but close <laughs> enough uh, and no pain. So this is first total bald. <laughs> Do you like it? Yes, but I'm still traumatized, LOL. Tattoos go on much better with waxed skin. That's not entirely true. Temporary tattoos. Also, it doesn't matter. Shaved skin is can be just it's, as fine. Yeah. Your tattoo artist will shave your skin before yeah. you do anything, not wax. But, but he's talking about those fake ones that they put on for the ops. Still. Well, that's good to know. She also said she couldn't believe I was doing it while I was on my period, so it must be less much less painful the rest of the month. If Just someone had told me last week that I'd be telling you this right now, I would have thought they were insane or sick. Ha ha ha. Just wait until after the op or even after Fisher Island and you will have a whole new shocking setup. If someone told me that last week that I would be doing this with you, dot, dot, dot. And then she laughed at that. Ha ha. Or ha. Good point. I'm watching you on ABC four now. How is it? Amazing as usual. Smiley face, prayer hands. Except it says you are founder and president. And then she, and then he scrolls oh my back up. Oh God. To the. <laughs> was this when they were talking, like they were talking about, hey, why did you leave? Or... It was way further up. And so he goes back to that and replies so curious about this. And I'm curious about what she says because it says founder and president. So was he not founder and president at this time? That's what I'm talking about. I think that was when he was in the news. Remember, he did that one interview and he just stormed was off. Was it that interview? I think it I was. Think that was in March. Maybe I'm getting my timing wrong. I don't know. But I'm anyway, sure. he ignores what she says and keeps going. Is she getting a tattoo on her chest? <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, I am unsure as to why. Well, remember he, from his photo, he gets one right above. Yeah, his... and it says "hold air," and he needs to make sure that his wife knows. That means fucking spin. <laughs> oh, God. That was such a terrible interview. <clears throat> and not everywhere also. And Goofy. so once again, she says it's too long to text because that's what she said originally when he asked yep. like the third time. Yeah, this is corny. And he says, are you struggling at all thinking about Fisher, which Fisher Island is what he's talking about. So that must be where they're staying. She said, nope. Second thoughts, nervous. Not at all. I promise. It's not like that. I'll tell you if you can call to or tomorrow. We will be together tomorrow, right? And she liked that. Want to just start tomorrow, upside down, smiley face? Oh, BTW, Matt is going to try to convince you to let him come with us tomorrow night. LOL. I didn't know what to say to that. That, I think, is her partner. I'll take I don't know why the the name was they probably didn't redacted before and not now. Um, to Savannah's, LOL, I'll take care of it. She loved. I'll tell him she wants to talk privately about privately about tulum tulum is a place yeah in mexico okay uh wait does he does does he know i'm coming now he does not i will tell him both things at once and she laughed at that okay well since we have so much shit on each other we will be deterred into silence on all things forever mutual assured destruction funny how that doesn't work that way tim <laughs> I was just writing that, but used different words than shit. You texted shit. Well done. I'm trying. Ha 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 ha. Seriously, though, why does he want me to do this? Referring to God. I can figure it out. He better have an amazing plan to make me believable. You have a big job to accomplish in a couple of days. I think you will be great and believable, and I think he may be trying to heal you from some things you have had to carry around. I don't know what that means, but it makes sense at the end. Um, Going to be easy and super fun. This is very healing. 
Also, you know he's fucking bullshitting because he didn't capitalize he. For real. Ara, Ara with the 20. Thank you for the super thank chat. Thank you. It's with another 20, that's yeah. after that You're 10. You're on fire. Awesome. Thank you. It's one of the most powerful healing modalities, but only he can direct and instruct it and does not work with just any couple. He's talking about the couples ruse here. Yep. He picks the partnership. I would never try it. Uh, I know... And then she liked that and laughed at the other thing. And another thing. So you want to hear s- some good news? Yes. <laughs> we are at $1,700 for Savannah's fund, and there is still one more day for them to donate. But guess who hasn't contributed? Okay, I'll just tell you, Brad. Wow. I have not either. Send me the Venmo to my other phone. Brad's a dick. Delete. <laughs> Who is a top donor so far? I'm going to double it. Okay, one sec. Matt, $250. Osborne. Who also works for OUR. Yeah, then the Venmo. It's going to be hotter when I see the donation. What? Uh, <laughs> Then you... That can be your payback for my Brazilian. He Get laughs it, girl. at that. I actually want to pay you back in a different way. Oh. That's more on target with Brazilian. You just leveled it up with that one. Girl. I know shit I'm sorry I was like was that okay after I sent be honest what did you think when you read that very inappropriate text no uncomfort I want to be respectful still feeling you out listen mother effers of the near to far future who did a full forensics of someone's laptop after she died on her 12th undercover op we are getting into roll, bitches. This is how it's done. The case is Bernardo Cozumel. Mother effer is selling children for S. Look up the case, you Fs. We likely have rescued a bunch by the time you see these texts. So F you. What have you ever done ever to rescue anyone or anything? Blank is an effing hero and I will not let you piss on her grave. I'm like, where this are is we right now? I am like completely detached from reality. Oh my god! At this point, she laughed at that. Oh wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy has sway with people because this is the. If anybody ever told me, if my friend told me this, I'd be like, do not contact me ever again. Well, and he's predicting that she's gonna die. Yeah. What? I'm going to die on my 12th op? Can I at least do 21st? Did it make you pee on your newly waxed skin? It was intense. I peed a little riding it. <laughs> what? Oh my god. What are you saying? What does that even mean? And she responds, thankfully, no. Oh, Whoa. Tom. Oh my god. Uh she said thankfully no. He says ha ha ha. And then shared an attachment. That is definitely an iPhone picture code. Uh but I just did this while I talked to you multitasking and then he sent a reaction gif. Wow, next time wax talk and run. What machine is that? Uh oh she's probably at the gym, I'm guessing. Uh wait, why did it send you a a girl ripping up paper lol she's waxing her junk <laughs> oh why did you send that what the f- what oh nordic track to 2450 wait i think only guys have junk i don't know what to call it <laughs> oh my god i'm going respectfully chat i'm going to ask you if you truly are going to believe this little con artist he has been fed tom he has not missed a meal do not allow him to deceive you. He is the father of lies. <laughs> I won't be taking any notes. Anyway, he said, uh, she said, oh, LOL, that's not paper. I don't know either. Haha, ha, it's a wax strip. You should have just let me wax ya. Next time, girl. <laughs> you don't feel at all wheel- weird or shy or anything, Re Fisher, question mark. That's the island apparently they're going to. Uh, nervous but mostly in a good way just a little unsure of myself why unsure what's there to be unsure about Uh, i don't know bud you asked her to come on this op last week and she's never done anything in her life anyway on with this just this like the stuff that she said that she doesn't want to talk about over text tomorrow 
you don't know what you like have you not been treated right sorry don't mean to pry yes i do actually why did this just come off the mic i peed a little writing it is literally something some shit i'd text my friends when i was 14 yep seriously yep. sorry my microphone just came undone yeah this woman this man is married me, uh, and has never learned anything about women's anatomy Hold on, let me mute this, Joe. And I muted it. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, your turn. Okay, what did she say? It's complicated... I'm not uh, being treated badly. I, it was just an indirect result of things I don't want to text. I promise I'll explain tomorrow. He's really prying this so Okay, I shall wait. Much. Will you, though? Uh, don't overthink it, though. Haha, -ha, I'm... It's not going to be a huge deal. Will I have time... Well, will I have time to work out all next week? Like, actual workout in a gym, lol? And then he sends a GIF and says, if this position is unfamiliar to you, then yes, you have been treated badly. Oh, my God. Did he send, like, a position demonstration I, GIF? I don't know. Laughed at an image. Oh, wow. He says, ha, 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 ha. I beat a little again. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed at that. I guess I have been treated badly. Oh, my God. Jesus, H. Damn it. And to top it all off, I have treated you badly, too. For having just sent corn. F word. Oh, so this was like an explicit gif here. And then, are those, is that a hard eyes? Emo I don't know. I can't tell. And then he says, you can't tell it's not. You have never seen it before. In the industry, we call this hardcore corn. And then he sends another one. And she says an eye roll. So he's got to be joking. But even still, this is like, so, this is sexual harassment. <laughs> like, I just am astounded that he behaves this way. Are you done receiving this word? I can keep going. Last and then another one. one. Actually, the last one kind of turned me on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bro cannot keep his story straight. Oh, it doesn't even turn me on. Oh, wait, the last one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where, where are you getting these, buddy? From the private spank bank or? Oh, my God. In the industry. Yeah, right, Elizabeth? And then she goes, oh, wow. <laughs> Don't send anything right now. Ha, ha, why? Blank's on FaceTime with Blank. I'm texting from my computer now. Okay. And then the <laughs> nervous then laughing. The grimacing emoji. Wolofy texts have shown up. You should cut that laptop connection scary actually i'll get you a burner tomorrow blank already did it's on its way if the laptop didn't connect to my phone i couldn't have texted you just now they are standing right next to me they have haven't seen anything they are practicing wrestling moves over facetime it's not showing up any texts okay not parenta has it and we'll give it to you tomorrow sorry to scare you oh awesome okay i like being scared it makes me feel sexy too See, some of us know what we like, which is just kind of rude. It is not kind of. It's very it's rude. rude. Saying prayers. Saying prayers makes you feel sexy. No wonder you were hiding it from me. Well, we'll find a way to make it work, I guess. Oh, well, that's not what I meant. Another gif. Maybe we start with something like this and see where it goes. We were actually saying prayers and then laughed at. Ha ha ha. Name. I know. Just having fun with prayer s. I do not like being scared. <laughs> Casey said, Laughing Tim, emoji. these are inside thoughts. Yes, these are not talk talk thoughts or move your <laughs> thumbs thoughts. These are these are to remain in your head. What you, does romantic mean? I to do you? like romantic. Uh hmm, let me think about that answer and tell you tomorrow. Me too. I told you I'm a demisexual. Yes, you did. <laughs> Which is why I can't eggplant emoji even with the hottest s workers <laughs> wait what did kyle say 
The only thing worse than this was one time a dude on Grinder asked if I, if he could fart on my feet, and I laughed so <laughs> I, so hard I burst a blood vessel in my eye. Oh That's my God. oh my God. Seriously, my job is Looney Tunes. She emphasized that. For a non-corn viewer to be acting this way, ha, 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 crazy. What does that even mean? It I really is, know. dot, dot, dot. And you. Oh, well, I learned fast. Hopefully just as fast in, rea uh, in real life. The swearing, though, I might have to practice beforehand, but not yet. Of all my peeps at OUR, you would be the last one I would have wanted to tell about this tactic. Not sure why, just wouldn't want to offend you or disappoint. And now look. LOL, I feel bad that you thought I'd be offended or disappointed, but I guess I get it. I don't know why it doesn't make sense if I think about it through spiritual eyes. Oh, Lord. Now we're getting, like, Lori and Chad in here. But now it makes perfect sense. And she loved both of those images or those And the messages. whole thing makes it that much more intense and sexy and fun. See you tomorrow. Good night. If you start to fall asleep at wheel, let me help you stay awake by dreaming up Fisher scenarios. And then she emphasizes with the hard eye emoji. And then the wet emoji. Oh, okay. Laughed and at those and then sent a gif reaction. Some more like lovey emojis. Didn't mean to send the last one. Orgasm face is for later. Wait, I didn't see that. Hot. The third face Hot. on the row. That's O face. Bro is telling on himself. What the <laughs> fuck? Haha, <laughs> I use that for a mad face. Sad mad. Does your face look like that during O? Hmm, I hope not. He looks unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of got it there. Ha ha ha. I guess I'll find out maybe. It's giving. <laughs> maybe? Maybe? I find out, maybe. <laughs> so cringe. Oh, you will. Oh, God. Probably sooner than you think. Really? Good night, smiley face. I'm surprised you that looked at it that, face. honestly. Oh, is it winky? Uh, I have a feeling- I'm fighting for my life. Matt might give you pushback on me coming to Mexico as more than secondary. Just be sure to tell him I fasted and prayed about it. I decided. Wait. If so, if you're going to talk to Matt before me, then can I just tell him I have to meet with you from one to three or should I keep my brother's story? So they're lying now. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, just got to the office, but I can leave again soon. I'm heading up to Grand A soon. I'm assuming that's Grand America. Uh, okay, give me 15 minutes and I'll leave here. I'm north of you anyway. I won't be there for at least 45 something time i don't even know what that word is okay do you want any food i'm good thanks okay on my way i'm leaving now from linden grab a room jk where, where are, you? are you i'm here hello did you chicken out sorry on the phone just pulled uh, into the garage i went to get food and it took forever no prob just got her in gibson lounge you know it super private Yes, coming. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this blasted garage. There are no signs. You lived there for a week. You should know. <laughs> I did valet all week. Did you fond elevators? I'm actually lost. Nowhere. Do I come rescue you? Maybe. Or wait. Hello? Hi. Just <laughs> leaving the office. Sorry. Can you send me a pin? I forgot where you were at. Um, do you have the key fob? I think you do. Uh, and then face palm emoji. You need to get a ride here. Are you guys almost here? Here, come on out. Okay. Miss you. Well, I'm an idiot. Do uh, do you even know what I'm going? What I'm doing? Ugh. You don't even know what I am doing right now. What are you staying overnight? And you just now tell me. Uh, I was super distracted with my thoughts for some reason, and I literally ran out of gas on the highway, then walked a mile to the gas station, and a stranger, who is a bishop, filled up a gas can and took me back to my car to get some, to add some gas. I blame you. Holy shit. Are you okay now? That had to be freezing. Yep. Driving again. I have a big coat. I noticed. 
And then she laughed at that. Why so distracted? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'll give you one guess. Thinking about how to best please Matt O as his EA. I know it's a ton of pressure. You what? As his EA, not anything else. Why did you put yucky images in my head? So weird. Sorry, my mind is in the gutter. Your fault. You really owe me now. I do. I accept the debt and can't wait to repay it. Your wish is my command. Command. <laughs> Smammed. I blame you on uh, blame things on you more often. I should blame things on you more often. He loved both of those. And then she emphasized an image. Hey, I woke up with total peace. I hope you did too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's trying to be the guru. I woke up thinking, did that actually happen? And then total peace. And then just replayed it over and over again. Yes, me too. Dreamt about. And then she loved both of those. I came home last night so happy. Kay and kids even noticed. We watched Chosen, read scriptures, and I felt spirit so strong last night. And this AM, it's so bizarre and amazing. This is the craziest stuff. I'm this assuming that they shit. did some getting into character. Maybe, yeah. <clears throat> and then she said, I love that. Triple heart. God is outside the Bix waiting for us to eventually go to him there. The box. box. <laughs> yeah, I'm realizing that. It's like leaving another iteration of the Garden of Eden. The box is good until he can only use so much inside it. Use, use us, us so much. much inside it. That's really good comparison. It makes me, it makes so much sense to me now, but never even occurred to me before all of this. Very limiting inside, but if we leave too soon, we will get crushed. And she emphasized he that. He will call us out when he slash she knows it's time. Whoa. This got me too they maybe it is uh he and she elohim equals father and mother god that's according to the hebrew uh can we get dan mcclellan to <laughs> confirm this because i'm I really fucking that. doubting that i don't know <clears throat> you know what else is funny i don't think i have ever learned so much from any other single person in my entire life i studied and listened to and watched you for so long with such a desire to keep learning from you and then this and it will just keep going because he just makes shit up as he goes yep. i'm tired of the bullshit explanation that heavenly father wants to protect her from us really us we the little arsler mortals while she is a powerful eternal goddess divine yeah she needs protecting arg as if she's some wilting flower we can't just come to terms with the fact that certain leaders accidentally manipulated doctrines so we make up the most bizarre and real and ridiculous justifications this really got me i was like this is the perspective of a very progressive mormon it's i mean it's all a ruse it's just like i don't know he probably saw that she but had this some does of not drive with his i'm a dedicated mormon i've been there every sunday yeah like, but that doesn't get you into somebody's pants i guess that's fair if you're if you're going with the religion the way that it is that says you can only have sex with your wife that's fair who is lawfully wedded to you whoa all right with Ara. another 50 thank you chill we appreciate you we appreciate so you. much um but yeah the the whole yeah i mean it, if they're it's like, manipulative then yeah yeah it's i feel like it's a manipulation and also the fucking just unsolicited arse word arsler uh -huh. like come on buddy what is going on here oh that makes so much sense i pray to both equally i'm going to start doing that too see she's she's in that space he's using that it's Catherine, his advantage who is his wife gives our children priesthood blessings just as joseph instructed the sisters to do and for 100 years they did until one day without even pretending to evoke revelation someone decided to reverse it in the little white manual not someone Brigham Young. <laughs> WTF, like blacks in priesthood, same story. Wait, really? I didn't know about the 100 years. What 100 years? This is new to me. Man, there's so much I want to talk about. That's because there was no 100 years. And we all love to live in the box of such mistakes, living in fear to do and say exactly what Joseph did and said. 1830 to 1930, women were giving priesthood blessings, anointing with oil and everything, which is true. I do recall that. All the way until 1930? <clears throat> I don't believe maybe no, not publicly doing i think only yeah i don't know they were doing it i don't think it was that long that's fact that's fact never knew this i believe you 
dessert book was even selling love the painting <laughs> for a couple of years until they got scared and canceled. We have it hanging in our house. Let's see a picture of it, buddy. Oh, I he wish has there it. was. Oh, did he? Yeah. From Anthony Sweat. AnthonySweat.com slash relief. I can't type it in right now, but. It all, uh, I wish there was so much more time to talk about all, all of this, everything. I have so many questions and thoughts. It all feels so good. And then he sends the link. Oh, wow, this is so interesting. Well, this is what women do in initiatories. Yes. Anthony is one of the BYU professors, one of the few BYU professors I trust still. He's a friend. He's amazing. He painted this and desert, dessert, sold it for a year. Dessert book sucks. I can tell you stories. And she said, anointing and blessing. I know who he is. And then she loved that message. They talk about him all the time on don't miss this. They don't care so much about truth. Just want to be popular even with the woke mob. What? Cr I would never uh, think that of Desert oh, yeah, Book. Right um, Don't Miss This is like a YouTube channel. They do like a podcast and uh, they talk about the uh, that week's lesson in Sunday school or whatever. This is the painting. That definitely was not 1930, buddy. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Yep. Like Celeste. Did you get that part? Uh, no wonder many so so many people leave. Which is interesting given his whole, like, I'm a dedicated Mormon and I'm so sad they excommunicated me. Bang. Um, I don't see the need to leave, though. I see the church kind of like a phone. It's a tool to get certain things done, but still has technical difficulties sometimes and doesn't work right. Holland. Oh, that's a quote. Except a quote. in the case that of his only begotten son, imperfect people are all god has ever had to work with he said that must be terribly frustrating to him but he deals with it so should we and when you see imperfection remember that the limitation is not in the divinity of the work holland that's uh elder holland of the Scroll 12 i can't jeffrey r holland I don't blame them at all. It's better to stay in, of course, and just see it and live it right. The covenants are housed in the 501c3 called LDS Church. That's why I stay. But the 501c3 does not cross over the veil. Testimony meanings. Bite. Bite. I know the church is true over and over, and they don't say, I know Jesus lives and is God. They should begin and end with that. It's like we are given a super yummy Tootsie Roll and take the wrapper off, toss the candy to the ground, and eat the wrapper instead. I mean, we're grateful for the wrapper. It keeps the candy clean and stuff. But why the F are we eating it? When youth grow up and realize they have been being fed wrappers, they are out of here. It's our own fault. I did not read your text as I wrote mine. We were saying the same thing. That's a very interesting perspective, honestly. LOL, yep. I love the the Tootsie Roll analogy. The That trumps my phone analogy, LOL. I like to throw some F words in there while talking about the gospel. Don't be mad. Ha ha ha. You're just training me, right? I have had angel comms to me where they use language, by the way. Never the F word, so I'm probably over the top, but all the others for sure. Also, I'm morphing into Brian now, and I can't help it. Oh, my God. See, this is why I'm telling you guys. He's like, now he's entering his little alter ego thing he has going on. I love this uh, little little lore revelation of the, the, the angels, angels swear. swearing, like, Moroni came down to Joseph and he was like, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing, Joseph? There's some shit over in the, the hill. Get, get your ass down your there ass and, get it. and go get those damn plates, <laughs> idiot. Oh, my God. I meant to laugh, so I changed it. Uh, emphasized it. Uh, he forgives you anyway. Remember, LOL. Brian says every bad word over and over in public and when we are alone. Is that okay? I was just yep. envisioning in my mind him just being like, shit, 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 shit all the time. <laughs> like, will it throw off the Gibson room vibe if he does this? And whatever that other beautiful room is called. I love that secret room. Nope. Me too. Meet you there tonight at 9 p.m. K. Don't run out of gas. Uh, fire emojis just try to let tim come through a little bit when we are alone i just need some uh it just needs to feel real to me 
And then he sends a gif and says, don't worry, I get that. It's the only way it works. Has to be real for me, too. And then she laughed at the image. You won't feel you are with Brian when we are alone, I promise. Heart emojis. Okay, got to go do breakfast slash scriptures. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Oh, I am, and I'll start using the burner today. One more thing. I don't think think you saw this one earlier, so I'm saying it here again. You know what oh, else is funny? Oh, she just repeated that message again. The, oh. I've learned so much from you. Yeah, there you go. It feels like it was all by design. I hope I don't mess up and say things that are wrong. I promise I'm trying my hardest. Don't worry about that. It's I just needed to be able to trust you this much, and now I can trust him to trust you. Hey, how are you? As in Jesus. Uh, talking to blank one sec, and then just sends an image. You wouldn't be able to stop by before 4.30, would you? Yes, we are. And she asked me to share this with you and everyone and then sent a link. To a funeral page, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, funeral. And then she said, click on this to see the address at the bottom. Sorry, should have sent all this to you, to your other phone, I forget. How are you with everything? Been thinking about it all. All day, kind of distracting. Uh, how is Celeste? She's totally fine. I'm not going to talk about... It all over again just to make it less complicated from now on. I have some more insight about you, Andy, and past you and past lives, etc. I got a bit of a download, maybe. Can't wait to tell you. Also need to present the backstory as I have told the target about you and me, etc. Really? When are you going to tell me? This is giving Lori and Chad. Like, I yeah. got intel on you from, like, the angel person. Yeah. Can I call you in 10? Please. Excited. Love that. Uh, I tried to call you back. My kid is back in the car. The secret will have to wait. It's all good. That's the last one. Well, that was so, a wild geez. ride, wasn't it? Oh my God. But I mean, you can see this. And she was completely enchanted with him. And I mean, she's being groomed. There's yeah, no that shame. It is exactly what it is. I mean, she looked up to him. She stated in like multiple places that she was always like, infatuated with the stuff that he was doing and yeah. i mean the story that he has been telling the public at large is not it's this. admirable but it ain't this <laughs> but it's not it's pretty obviously not real so it, i i mean she is a victim and it's a lot of the texts were silly but it's she was all in on this and it's all based on a lie that he was doing these things essentially for personal gain and to victimize other people f for his own pleasure so oh yeah someone says that Percival P says calling info from God slash angels a download is what Alex Jones does well that would not surprise me if he's that's not shocking or listening yeah. to Alex Jones oh man and the same thing with kind of the the visions of glory book that we've been talking about where he's like knows these things about other people inherently what a mess indeed yeah, this was tim was ballard in his conversation with one of his one of the women that he took or wanted to take on an undercover operation that is now suing him um rightfully so for crazy unhinged stuff um i truly i read through these a while ago and i was like we have to read these on stream because he just like the way that he talks and the things that he says like the peeing it is thing so wild and i just like I, I don't even know what to say. Like, this is a, I cannot a different level of delusion. I cannot imagine a any sort of um, reputable organization that does the kind of thing that they say they do engaging in any behavior like that. Anything. Yeah. yeah. It, it is pretty obvious that that should not be what's going on. Agreed. Especially when it comes... I mean, she's not even an employee. No. Not that that her being an employee would be any better because that is very obviously not the kind of uh, tactics that civilians should have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hope she wins her lawsuit. I don't know what his deal is with P and everything else. I This dude needs therapy Help. And to probably stop whatever substances he's taking. I just, and I hope 
all the women that are suing get stop it get some help <laughs> get some help get something out of it at least i mean it's not going to take away the trauma from this experience but he needs a urologist <laughs> seriously like dude what is your deal shoot well that was a lot of content oh uh, yeah that was crazy anyway i'm hungry <laughs> I can't believe we've been on for so long. So anyway, that's that's Tim Ballard. He's speaking at CPAC. Par for the course, honestly. Should be part of the like resume that you submit. How many lawsuits are you facing or have yeah, faced regarding um Exactly harassment? Indeed. <laughs> God. <laughs> so I'm glad that we liked the contemptuous uh, reenactment of all these messages. It was fun and very eye-opening to me. I feel bad. I hadn't for read all of that, that stuff. Had to interact with him. Yeah, Jordan read me the highlights, uh, but man, that was that was brutal. So. So we'll plan on being here on Thursday for now. If that changes, we'll update you. Yeah. I only say that because we're in the yep. potty training. If you missed the beginning, debacle. we are we're going to be doing that. We're going to be in the the trenches this the, the rest of the week. So. so if we go insane Thursday night and don't stream, we'll let you yeah. know. But that will probably be why. We also had planned uh, uploading a uh, edited video this week, um, but since we kind of sprung on the the toilet training thing. We're going to forego that this week, and we'll, we'll do We're it We're just week. pushing it out a week. Yeah, so. It's coming together quite well. Yeah, we've been. Uh, the we've structure been of it is solid. Checking out a lot of extra stuff that we hadn't considered initially. Yeah. But thank you all. Uh, thanks again to uh, Ara, especially with, for all the, the gifts, and all the new members, members and everything. Um, you help us keep going and make this doable i wouldn't yeah. read these text messages for anyone else except for so, you guys make sure you follow us on instagram if you don't already at jordan and mckay and yeah much love wish us luck wish us luck and grid night to all of you we love you pray for us hopefully <laughs> we make it up yeah, the other send side. Us good vibes for this seriously okay <laughs> Peace. Bye.